Hey guys how are you all? Welcome back to my channel. Today we will see what if Naruto gets Karen pregnant. If you enjoy then please like share and do comments. Rain was horrible, it meant a lack of sunshine, a lack of dryness, an overabundance of wet. In the grass, the rain often brought thunderstorms, massive dark clouds like angry gods raining down death and destruction. But worse, worse was the floods, they came without warning and wreaked devastation. A flood took everything from her once before. She was barely a child when it happened, she remembered her mother being happy, her father being alive, and her home. They had a home, not the crappy shack that she and her mother used to live in but a real home with a real yard and a real family. But then a flood came, taking her home, her father, their happiness, and eventually her mother. Leaving Karen alone in this cold dark world to cut out a place for herself. She had felt and seen happiness when she participated in the Chunin exams in Konoha when she was rescued by a boy Sasuke Uchiha. But since then her life had become hell. They probably think I'm dead already. Karen shivered as a gust of wind blew up into her shelter, a small cave along the steep incline of a raging river that Karen had to pull herself out of. Her dismal fire barely more than a glowing pile of embers sputtered and faded with the wind and rain before it surged back to life. She'd have to get more wood soon. This was all their fault, she had told them that this mission was dangerous, she had told them that it was too risky, she warned them about the weather. But those idiots said that everything would be fine, that she could heal any wounds they got, and that if she died it was her fault for being weak. Bastards, she ripped off her headband and threw it into the fire. They didn't care if she lived or died, so why should she care about them? The only person in her life that cared about her was her. It had been that way ever since her mom died. The strap of her headband fed the fire while the metal plate sunk into the growing pile of ash. She pushed all of her hatred into watching that plate burn hoping that it would start to melt, or that it was some dark symbolic ritual set the whole village aflame. Thunder clapped and that anger died. She screamed, good loud and hard, pressing herself up against the cold wet wall of the cave. Please, someone come, I can't take it anymore. She just wanted to be safe and warm and dry and not starving. It didn't matter with who or where. Anywhere was better than here. And anyone was better than being alone. If only Sasuke was here. If I get attacked by a bear again, I wonder if he'd show up. The thought brought a smile to her face barely strong enough to stop the tears from falling from her face. She pushed her glasses up and wiped her eyes, only succeeding in getting more rainwater on her face. The fire began to fade. If she went out there, she might die. If she didn't she'd freeze to death. She could already feel the early stages hyperthermia began to set in. The kind of wood didn't matter. Even waterlogged would be fine with her jutsu. She just needed the fuel. With a groan Karen stood with slow and shaky movements. Ready to run back inside the second she saw another flash of lightning. The wind had died down, but the sky was still dark and heavy with rain. Hopefully it doesn't start hailing. Through the curtain of rain, she surveyed the area scanning for any kind of wood, a fallen tree, some driftwood, anything. She saw a large log stuck against a rock near the shore, probably brought from upriver. And there was something orange on it. Wait, that's a person. She closed her eyes and focused on her mind's eye, he was alive, if only barely. With slow careful steps down the rocky slopes, Karen advanced towards them. He was a blonde boy, half drowned and covered in blood. The only thing stopping him from being dragged down river was his orange jacket. A massive hole torn through it was snagged on one of the branches and was getting close to tearing loose. He seemed familiar, kind of. There was no headband symbolizing his allegiance, was he even a ninja? Gritting her teeth Karen placed a hand on the log and stepped onto the water. Normally walking on water wouldn't be a problem for her, but she was tired, hungry, afraid, and the water was wild. She needed to be careful a slip for her would likely mean both of their deaths. She inched her way towards him, both hands holding firm to the log. Why on earth was she risking her life for a stranger? Especially one that was probably going to die anyway. There was no way that his body wasn't in late stages of hypothermia, plus there was the blood that was still leaking from his head. Biting her lip she extended her hand outward and grabbed him by the collar. Lightning struck, thunder boomed. A tree set of flame, splintered in two, crashed down into the river. Karen screamed, throwing herself onto the log as her concentration failed her her feet slipping down into the water. 
Her glasses fell from her head tumbling off the log and into the raging water below. Another reason to call this day an absolute monstrosity that had no right to exist. The clarity she once viewed the world with was gone, and everything became vague, dark, and blurry. Slow deep even breaths. I'm in a valley surrounded by tall trees. The lightning won't hit me the lightning won't hit. She tried to stop the shaking, but she couldn't even move, her body was paralyzed and her feet were growing numb. She had to move. Somehow among the rain and wind, she heard the boy's jacket tear and his body shake loose. She lunged, grabbing holding of the boy by his arm, his head lulling in the water. One hand sticking to the log with chakra even as her fingers were losing their feeling. Why was she risking her life for his again? With what little strength she had left in her, she pulled, dragging the boy behind her. Inch by painful inch she moved towards the shore. Karen looked at the boy when she pulled him up onto shore. Not that it did much good, his features were a blur to her. All that she could tell was that his shirt, much like his jacket had a large hole where the heart was. Dried blood covered much of his torso, but his heart was still beating. Now, she pointed toward her cave and let out a sigh. I have to carry your ass all the way up there. This better be the son of some nobleman she was saving. Somehow she managed to drag the blonde boy up into her cave, where the glowing embers of her fire offered little in the warmth she was hoping for. Once again she tried to turn her anger and annoyance into something useful by staring at the embers. Nothing happened. Maybe you have something that can help me? The boy had some useful stuff. A few ration bars. She quickly ate one, a few scrolls that she couldn't read, and several kunai. So she rescued a ninja, there went her noble son dream. Maybe he came from one of the nice villages that would be so grateful she saved his life that they'd offer her a spot among them? I guess there's no way of telling until you wake up, huh? She poked him in the cheek and sighed. She didn't even get any wood for her fire, just a useless boy, at least his body heat might do something, probably not. The sky cracked and thunder exploded as the log he had been stuck on was shattered into flaming splinters. Even if she wanted to go get some of the precious fire it was too risky, she could barely see, and it was only getting darker. Which meant it was going to get colder. I can't believe I'm about to do this, she growled, taking off the boy's jacket with extra venom. His shirt was next, then his pants, leaving him in just his underwear. Even if she couldn't really see, there was no way she was going to take those off for him. If you wake up before I do and get any funny ideas I'm going to kick your ass. Assuming they lived through the night. Karen placed her chain shirt next to his and spread out their clothes as good as she could around the fire in the vague hope of the embers drying them. But with the wind blowing rain, she doubted it would do much. Clad in nothing but her underwear she grabbed the boy and pulled him close, using his body as a shield for the rain and a source of warmth. He was oddly warm, despite being pulled out from a water. It was nice, even if it was the most embarrassing position she'd ever been in. She'd probably die if somebody were to find her like this. With the feeling returning to most of her body, save her toes that were going to fall off any moment now Karen allowed herself a few moments to collect herself. She needed a plan. If it was still raining tomorrow and Blondie was still knocked out, they'd probably die. If he was awake, she could send him out into the rain to gather firewood, unless he couldn't see shit like her then they both die. No rain and she would wait for him to wake up, if he didn't she'd probably leave him and take what she could of his and try to make her way to a village. If he did they'd head off together to the nearest village, get directions, and then she would insist that he take her to his village. He owed her for saving his life after all. You better at least be cute, rich, or useful, Karen mumbled before she forced herself to sleep. She still couldn't believe that she was cuddling in her underwear with some boy she never met before. When she awoke it still smelled like rain, but the sun had finally peeked out from behind the clouds. Or so she thought, it looked bright and cheery out there, and there were birds happily chirping in the distances. But that wasn't what concerned Karen the most, sure it not raining and a lack of thunder was a great thing, however, it was her companion that concerned her. At some point, her catatonic cuddle buddy had moved during the night and was now hugging her tightly. It was actually kind of nice. And warm. But that was beside the point. Blondie was awake or at least moving. Pushing herself out of his arms Karen tried to examine him once more, she still couldn't see shit without her glasses. They were probably lost in the river forever now, those things were expensive. He owed her a new pair of glasses. 
He owed her a lot actually, maybe he was one of those oath-bound idiots and he'd be her eternal manservant. She stared at him for a few silent moments trying to figure out if he was asleep or not. He probably was, she'd wake him up after she was dressed. He did not need any thoughts about her cuddling him in their underwear in order to stay warm. The good news was that her clothes were kind of dry. So she had that going for her. She poked him in the cheek. Hey, wake up. He groaned and slapped her hand away. Rude, I said wake up. She shouted right in his ear. Ah, I'm awake. Blondie shot up like a rocket, stumbling forward and almost hitting his head on the low-hanging roof. He turned to her, still in his underwear. Um who are you? Well, he certainly didn't have any shame, standing in front of her in nothing but his underwear. Shame she couldn't tell if he was hot or not. For all, she knew he could be ugly. He didn't sound hot. I'm Karen, I'm the girl that saved your life by pulling you out of the river, now who are you? Me? There's no one else around. Oh, I don't know. That didn't sound good. Karen took a deep breath and tried to think about this calmly. Maybe he just didn't know if he should tell her his name. Maybe he was shy or something. You don't know as in you don't know who you are? Yay, that one. Do you know who I am? He was an idiot. An idiot that didn't know who he was. Karen wanted to scream. So she did. A good long healthy scream. So where are we going? Karen groaned at the orange clad back of Blondie or at least the orange vaguely human-shaped blob of color that was her companion. He just had to be an amnesiac idiot. We're following the river, it'll eventually lead to a town where we can, hopefully not starve. Both of them were broke. Very very broke. She lost all her money when her team left her for dead, and he probably lost his wallet or didn't bring it when he fell into a river and lost all his memories. But what if there is no town on the river? Blondie asked climbing over a fallen log that barred their path. At least he was nice enough to offer her a hand up. And why do I have to help you walk? Maybe he was amnesiac before and the person that found him before was so sick of his shit they pushed him into the river? Because I lost my glasses saving your life. She told him that three times already. So I can't see where I'm going. And we're following the river because all the rivers in the region are tributaries of the Magami River. And yes there are cities on that river. Oh, he pulled her up over the log easily and helped her down as well. At least he was a decent guide dog. Shame they already ate all of his ration bars. How do you know that this isn't the Mo Gi something river? Quote, stop asking so many questions. And it's Magami. Karen took a soft step forward as she tried to navigate the uneven forest floor, something difficult enough when she can see. And trust me the Magami river is big, you'll know it when we see it. Uh, okay, Blondie said, from his point position. But what do we do when we get to a town or something? Find me some damn glasses. Being blind was so unbelievably annoying, mostly because her seeing eye idiot, was well, and idiot. And then after that, you owe me. Oh you what? She took a deep breath. She needed to stay calm if she pissed him off there was nothing that she could do to stop him. Then she'd be stuck alone in the middle of a forest blind. I saved your life, so you have to get me a new life. That means a home that was better than my old home you got that? Oh, he sounded like he was trying to sound like he understood what she meant. And how do I do that? Hopefully by turning out to be someone important from a nice village. Like Konoha. Konoha would be ideal, then she'd be in the same village as Sasuke, she could introduce herself, he would remember her, they would date, they would have, she would make certain that she got, then he'd marry her and she'd be set. The Uchiha were important or something, she heard the daimyo say so. Konoha? Blondie stopped in his tracks right in Karen's path. She stepped on a gnarled root in an odd way, her ankle slipped and twisted sharply to one side. The pain was enough to send her to the ground. God damn it, why'd you stop? Huh? Oh, Karen are you okay? Her valiant orange blob leapt to her defense his hand falling to her ankle. That s not supposed to look like that is it? No it's not, damn it, I rolled my ankle. Karen hissed in pain as Blondie touched it gingerly. What do I do? How can I fix it? Should I push it back? If she wasn't in so much pain his panicking might have been cute. No you idiot, she grabbed him by his shoulder and pulled him away from her foot. Help me up, I might still be able to walk. He helped her stand, supporting her upper body as she slowly tried to put pressure on her foot. The second her foot tried to bear any weight searing pain shot through her body. Damn it, I can't walk this, Blondie you're going to have to carry me. Uh, okay. He picked her up bridal style. Huh, you're lighter than you look. 
Ah yes, her permanent diet of being a broke ass bitch. Wait, this was wrong nobody but a hunky hunk should be carrying her like this and even then only to their bedroom. Not like this, carry me on your back. Huh, on my back? Uh, how do I do that? I don't have arms there. Just, Karen sighed and latched her arms around Blondie's neck. He better not get any funny ideas about this. If he even got any ideas. Just put me down and I'll show you how. With one foot on the ground, she hobbled around him and leaned against him. At least he was sturdy. Okay, I'm going to hop up onto your back. So lean forward a bit, and then hook your arms under my legs got that? Uh okay? Like a good obedient dog, he did as she said. With a grunt, she hopped up onto his back and he caught her legs. There, you should be able to walk much longer like this. He started to walk forward, his face right next to hers as her arms were draped around his neck like she was a scarf. How long do I have to carry you like this anyway? It shouldn't be too long, I am an Uzumaki so I heal quick. Ah yes, her only real claim to fame, the Uzumaki abilities that everybody just loved taking advantage of. From making fun of her red hair to her pasty skin, and how could she forget the numerous scars on her body from people that wanted to appreciate her Uzumaki heritage? Uzumaki? Blondie questioned, he shifted her weight slightly so that he was cupping her ass. Karen gasped, it wasn't the first time that somebody had grabbed her ass. But that didn't mean it was okay. Quit touching my butt, huh? Oh sorry. He didn't even seem to care as he navigated the forest, keeping River to their right. Man, for someone so cute you sure are bossy. That was a first. The first time a boy decides to give her a compliment and she's too blind to even tell if he's cute or not. He didn't sound cute, he sounded stupid. But it was enough for her cheeks to feel warm and maybe just maybe a bit happy about her current situation. You think I'm cute? Huh? Well, yay. She could practically hear the smile in his voice as they scrambled down a slight cliff. Like your hair, it's really pretty, oh and when you're not squinting you have pretty eyes, and I bet if you were to smile it'd be super pretty too. Those were the nicest things anybody has ever said to me. She tightened her grip and pressed her face into his shoulder, burying her smile in his jacket. Maybe it was worth saving you after all. Shame he wasn't Sasuke, or cute. Or probably anybody rich, powerful, or, wait, she didn't even know how much chakra he had. With a sigh that could easily be confused as a grunt, Karen closed her eyes and began to see the world with her mind's eye. She was nearly blinded by the sheer amount of chakra coming off of Blondie. It wasn't just a lot, it was more chakra than anybody in her village had ever had. Even the head ninja couldn't hold a candle next to Blondie. But there was more. His chakra was so bright and warm she could get lost in it. It was warm and dazzling. Sasuke's was the same, but Blondie. Blondie's was brighter and warmer. She just wanted to curl up inside of his chakra and sleep. A chill went up to her spine as she dug too deep and found something dark, something sinister lurking beneath all of his chakra. It was malicious and evil. Karen opened her eyes and gasped. You okay, Karen? I, how could she even answer that? Was that who Blondie really was under all this cheerfulness? Was he really a despicable person with chakra so dark? Or was there something else? I'm fine, just keep your eyes on the road. What road? She sighed. You can't be a smart ass when you're already a dumb ass. Just who the hell is Blondie? Biggest river this side of the desert did not do the Magami justice, at its widest part the river could be comparable to a moving lake or a calm ocean. The entirety of the land of rivers was contained within its banks as the innumerable islands that littered the river were home to villages and cities. The largest island was an island fortress built right in the middle of the riverbed, known as Magami Castle that served as the capital for the Lord of the Rivers. But the largest city was Komain City a conglomeration of many islands near the mouth of the river that formed into the largest trading mecca in the world. To say nothing of the river's natural beauty. The Magami was dyed a deep blue from the main cold glacier waters that fed into it, but as the various tributaries fed into it carrying waters and minerals from all over the world, the water changed color, smell, temperature, and flavor, creating a few places where it looked like every shade of blue could be seen. To Karen, it looked like a giant blob of blue. Karen? Blondie asked he had come to a dead stop the moment they broke through the trees on a cliff that overlooked the soft sandy shore. The river they had been following crashed down as a waterfall into the Magami. Please tell me that's the Magami and not a tripu thingy. I guess you can say the name right when you're actually amazed at something huh? 
she would be amazed too. If she wasn't blind, she couldn't even tell where the damn river ended and the sky began. So which way now? Blondie was practically bouncing with her on his back. Hold on let me check. She closed her eyes and, what are you doing? Of course, she couldn't expect him to give her a moment to concentrate. Bad enough his chakra and that darkness inside of him was going to make things harder than they needed to be. I'm trying to concentrate, I have the ability to sense people's chakra. Oh cool, Blondie chirped loudly. Do I have any cat raw? What's it like? Can I do that? She wanted to scream so much right now. It didn't matter if Blondie thought she was cute. He was so annoying sometimes. Still, at least he thought her ability was cool. You have a lot of chakra, it's kind of warm, and I have no idea what you can. Now you can you be quiet so I can focus for a second. Oh, his shoulders slumped and his head drooped. Sorry, Karen. It was hard not to picture him as a puppy that didn't know it wasn't supposed to eat your slippers but felt really bad that it did. It's okay Blondie, Karen sighed. She was ready for a warm bath, a warm bed, and some warm food. She closed her eyes focused. There had to be something nearby. A few people across the water, on one of the islands. Reaching them would be a pain even if she could walk. Blondie probably couldn't waterwalk anyways. She found them. A small gathering of people just down the shore. It had to be a house or something. Hopefully, they were the hospitable civilian type and not the hostile thug type. There's a house a few miles down the shore. Wow, you can sense that far? You're amazing Karen. Blondie shouted with great enthusiasm. Do you think they'll have food? I don't know. Her stomach roiled at the thought of something to eat. But if we hurry we should be able to reach them before it gets dark. Alright, hang on tight Karen. Before she could even process his warning he took the quick way down from their cliff top perch by jumping. Karen screamed. The cabin radiated warmth and smelled of fish, sweet, and bread. It was small, happy, and homey the very definition of a country cabin. With a large oak growing beside the house, where a lone swing set lulled by the wind. Grass, vines, and moss covered the stone foundation and much of the roof as well, allowing the home to be at home in the forest. All Karen saw was a green and brown blob in the forest, only slightly shorter and squarer. But she saw the people. A family of five, one had a faint wispy chakra that felt ready to blow away with the wind, an elder perhaps. One had strong and proud chakra that glowed with kindness, the father. The mother's was kind and caring, albeit slightly overworked and tired. Two children, their chakras glowed like sparks ready to ignite a fire. Should we knock on the door? Her orange-clad steed nickered as he stared at the house. It couldn't hurt, Karen said from over his shoulder, the family felt welcoming enough. She wiggled her ankle, it was probably good enough to run on if need be. But why use her own energy when Blondie was all too happy to carry her around? He might not be Prince Charming, but he could certainly be a noble steed. Do you think you can walk now though? What? You getting tired? I thought you said you could do this all day? No, I'm not tired, it's just, won't they think it's weird that I'm carrying you? Blondie adjusted her weight slightly before he began to move towards the cabin. It might earn us sympathy points if you show up carrying an injured cute girl such as myself. People tended to be nice when they were either afraid of you or sympathetic towards you. And Karen was far from a terrifying beast. Isn't that tricking them though? Great, he had a moral compass. Karen sighed and sunk into Naruto's back more, allowing her arms to dangle in front of him. Just the extra bit of pathetic she needed. I'm hungry, you're hungry, if it makes you feel bad then I don't know, chop their wood, do chores or something. But we're broke, tired, and hungry. Though that might have summed up her life as well. Blondie nodded, she could practically see the smile on his face from behind him. At least him being a goody two-shoes meant that he wouldn't abandon her when it was to his benefit. But there weren't any plans of having a partner in crime. She was already the brains, maybe he could easily be the brawn? Blondie knocked the door with the subtlety and urgency of a hurricane that nearly shook the door off its hinges. Hello? Anybody home? My friend is hurt and we're lost, oh and hungry too and I can cut the chores and do the firewood for you. His ears had to be tied in a knot somewhere in his brain. Karen remained silent doing her best to look ever so slightly zonked out and in discomfort, should be easy considering she was blind. Best to let the smiling earnest idiot talk with a bunch of other smiling earnest idiots. The door shook back and the sound of wood scraping against wood echoed from inside the house. 
There was mumbling and talking, and then more wood scraping. The door flung open to a blonde woman who was once beautiful but had been worn down by life. Oh my goodness, you both look ragged. Ryuji, Futaba, put some water on the fire. A tall man behind her relaxed. His arms were thick from carrying cords of wood and swinging around a heavy axe that thudded against the flower. Miyumi, are you sure about this they could be? Oh quit your worrying Zen, they're just two kids. The woman shooed the man away with the back of her hand. Now let's get you two inside. My goodness just looks at you. What happened? Are you okay? Oh, I don't really know what happened. Blondie shrugged pushing Karen's head up ever so slightly. I only remember waking up after Karen pulled me up from the river. You lost your memories? A young orange-haired girl asked running up to them. Futaba, a shrill elderly voice echoed from inside the house. You get back here and help your brother. The house was everything a home should be. Warm, caring, a battle between the forces of cleanliness and filth. The house had a few modern conveniences, electricity being one of them. Running water the other, which was odd, Karen didn't sense a town anywhere nearby. Miyumi ordered her family around like a line cook, expertly issuing command after command that sent the family scrambling. Karen liked her. Now then, Karen right? Let me take a look at your ankle. Miyumi rolled up her sleeves as Karen sat on a hard wooden stool. Be careful, it's still sensitive. Karen hissed as the woman touched her ankle. It really didn't hurt but she had to at least act like she was hurt, otherwise they could get suspicious. Oh my, you really twisted it bad, that you did. The woman began to wrap a wet cloth around Karen's foot. It's not much but this should relieve the pain just a bit. Sorry for troubling you so much. Nonsense girl as decent folks have to look out for one another. That we do. She stood, finishing off the cloth with a slightly too tight knot. Now, I'll warm up some of the supper for ya, then you and the boy can rest here tonight, does he have a name? Food, shelter, hopefully, a blanket or something warm she could snuggle up with that wasn't an idiot. I've been calling him Blondie, and really you're too kind, we wouldn't want to be a bother. Nonsense, a couple of friendly faces is just what this family needs right now. There was the edge to the woman's voice something that she was trying to hide. So what's your story? I, Karen swallowed, she didn't need to act. She just needed to stop acting. I was abandoned during a recent storm. Somehow I ended up saving Blondie. Huh, well he's a better catch than anything my husband has pulled out of the water, that he is, Miyumi laughed, taking a seat next to Karen. That got Karen's attention. Is he cute? What do you mean you can't tell? Karen pouted in the vague direction of the blob. Inside the house her vision was worse, grays blended with browns, reds, woods, blues, only the flickering fire gave her any real clarity as her world took on the depth of a pastel painting made by a child with far too much paint. When I saved him, I lost my glasses, so I can't really see anything, I don't even know what he looks like. Oh my, did this lady have to start every sentence like that? Well, then how do I put it? Let's see oh. He has a round face and has some cute little whisker marks on the cheeks. He's not much to look at right now. Well so much for Prince Charming, back to the horse theory, at least he wasn't run away screaming ugly. Still, she really shouldn't be surprised. She did literally fish him out of a river. But, he's going to be quite handsome when he grows up. What now? Karen wrinkled up her nose. How can you know that? Oh trust me. Once you get to my age it becomes painfully obvious which boys are going to become the good handsome men, and which ones become. Well, bastards, there's a story there isn't there? Karen asked scrunching her face in the vague direction of Miyumi's blob. The woman laughed. I'm afraid that story is much too mature for someone your age, that it is. Karen just folded her arms and pouted like a kid. The woman didn't even know her, hell she was a ninja. There was no way this peasant could possibly know anything about being a ninja. To say nothing of her own past. That's my point, that it is. Miyumi chuckled once again. I'll go and fix you and Blondie a bit of food. Just enough to settle your stomach before we send you two to bed. Thank you so much. Those words came directly from Karen's stomach. Karen flopped onto the spare bedroll Miyumi had given her. The clean feeling of her freshly washed skin mostly free of dirt was wonderful against the warm spare clothes she had been given. And the bedroll that she had been given was as soft as a cloud. It's like a day at the spa. Her faithful companion Blondie just snored in her general direction. Apparently, he wasn't bad to look at. He certainly didn't sound cute or handsome. He sounded stupid. 
and he was nice. Stupid nice people were always some degree of ugly. Mean people were also ugly. But that didn't change anything. There's no way that I'm buying into you being an ugly duckling, Karen snorted and snuggled into her covers. She closed her eyes and listened to the world around her. Blondie was snoring like a well-fed baby, it was almost peaceful. As her other senses faded into sleep the world around her began to light up as she activated her mind's eye. She wouldn't sleep without it no matter how exhausted she might be. It was her light in the darkness. The grandmother was asleep, Karen never got her name. The two children were fast asleep while their mother was failing to fall asleep nearby. Zen, the father was sitting next to the door his chakra was tense like it was on the verge of exploding at the slightest movement. Why was he so on edge? Was he always like that? The ever vigilant alpha protecting his pack? Or was it something else? His edge felt recent, like a new development, or some long forgotten fact. There, out in the woods, like a coiled snake ready to strike a man appeared. His chakra wasn't anything special, a bit twisted perhaps. Another appeared, then another. Karen expanded her range and, oh, oh no. 10, 20, 30, 40, no 50 chakra signatures had encircled them. And they were closing in for the kill. One chakra signature stood out from the rest, a tiger among the alley cats. His chakra was sharp and strong and used like a ninja or someone trained to fight with chakra. Worse it was large, larger than the average chunin. They were too coordinated for it to be a coincidence, this was a targeted attack, and a well thought out one. Escape would be difficult and being caught would make things worse. No, she had one advantage. These men didn't know that she, or Blondie, were here. They were after the people that lived in this house. They could hide and leave once everything passed over. But where? The closet. She moved with a slow deliberation, this wasn't the first time she had to hide for her life. She grabbed her bedroll and flopped it onto a blondie who snored in response. She could just leave him, finding him sleeping would increase her chances of survival, or might encourage them to search the house. Risks aside, blondie was her idiot, she saved him once, might as well make it twice then he'd owe her twice over. You're going to owe me big time, I want a house, with water, and electricity, I also want a good view, and a bed, and a shower with hot water. And some new glasses, Karen grumbled pulling Blondie towards the closet, which was just large enough for both of them if she lied down on top of him. It was a halfway decent disguise really, a pile of bedsheets and clothes sandwiched between two bedrolls. Once again Karen found herself cuddling with that Bond idiot she dragged out of her water. Once again for their own survival. Karen? Blondie groaned, choosing now of all times to wake up. What's going on? Why is it so dark? Why are you so close? Am I carrying you again? I can't carry you to sleep. Wait, can I? Another annoying trait to add to the list. He mumbled when he first woke up. If you want to live, keep quiet, Karen hissed, pressing her hand over Blondie's mouth. The men were closer now. A thud echoed through the living room, the door was kicked in, the father shouted, some other men shouted, the grandmother screamed. Men flooded into the house. Blondie struggled and managed to free his mouth. What's happening? Someone is attacking the house. I don't know why but if we go out there we'll be killed too. She pressed down on Naruto's shoulder using her full weight to keep him down. They're not after us. She hoped. Miyumi was awake, her chakra snapped into shape. It was a small pool, but one that had been used before. How had she not seen it before? The woman screamed in fury and rage and began to attack. One man died, then another, a third confronted her and fell moments later. In the mean others had taken the children and the father outside. The grandmother was dead. Let me go, Karen, I'm a ninja right? I can help, you'll die. Karen hissed slapping her hand over Blondie's mouth again. He needed to be alive, she didn't know why the thought of him dying made the bile in her stomach royal. Probably because he didn't treat her like dog shit. A great roar boomed from outside, like a beast of thunder dominating the land. Miyumi, so this is where you were hiding. Surrender yourself nice like and I'll let your kids live, can't say much about the father. Blondie pushed her off him. I'm going to help them. You'll die, she cried scrambling after him, only to grab onto his heel as he stood to walk out there unarmed, in nothing but a few ill-fitted clothes. Please, think about this it's not too late to hide. I have to, Blondie continued to walk his foot slipping out of her fingers. She wanted to scream, he just had to be an idiot knight in stupid shining orange armor. 
Idiot, idiot, idiot. He was her meal ticket. And now he was going to go out there and die. And why the hell was she following him? This had bad idea written all over it. Miyumi had been captured now, and was being beaten. They were just two genin. One that couldn't fight and one that didn't have any memories. The outside was lit by torches. Miyumi sat in the center of the group being held by her arms by two of the larger men. Her family, equally restrained forced to watch as she was beaten. You gave up as for this? A large man bellowed, his chakra roaring like a wild tiger. He was built like a brick shithouse, in his youth he might have been a mountain of muscle that ate the meal of three men. But with age that mountain had grown fat, though the muscle remained underneath. A large tattoo of a white tiger consumed his entire right arm and stretched up his shoulder blade. Piss off, Miyumi spat. His reply was another slap to her face that sounded like thunder. Hey, Blondie shouted, let them go. There went stealth and surprise, their only two advantages. Aside from Blondie's chakra, that was still more than all the other men combined, but that did a lot when he probably couldn't even use it. It's not like he'd remember how to fight let alone any jutsu. You and what army punk? The tiger roared, his massive gut shaking as he laughed. Tell you what, sell me your little girlfriend and I might let you join my gang. Oh Joy looks like she was going to be sold, again. Blondie tightened, his entire body tensing before he relaxed into a smile. His chakra began to rage like the ocean at storm, gathering in strength and ferocity. He was summoning it. That massive amount of chakra was being gathered for a purpose. Boss, a thug shouted from the crowd. That's him, the one that beat us back when we worked with Gato. This is the brat that cost us, Gato? Screw it, I'll just kill you and your little girlfriend. The boss roared, his tattoo lighting up with sparks of lightning. Don't let him use his jutsu. The same thug shouted. Blondie formed a hand sign, one hand sign, and his chakra went wild. Shadow clone jutsu. There was a flash, and Karen was dazzled for a moment. Her mind's eye going wild. The number of chakra signatures had doubled, no tripled? No more, much more. In the space between heartbeats, Blondie had flipped the numbers in their favor with an army of himself. Charge, they all shouted at once. Karen could do nothing, she didn't need to. Blondie knew how to fight, he could use a jutsu, and what a spectacular one at that. The cannon fodder fell under the might of his swarm. The only one that put up a fight was the boss with his arm throwing off lightning. A one-trick pony that would work with non-ninjas. But Blondie's trick was better. In the end, all those that didn't run were beaten within an inch of their lives. The only one still conscious was the thug that knew him. Look I'm sorry I'll give up thugging for good. Just please don't hurt me again. You know me right? The thug nodded frantically. Then where did we meet before? The wave don't you remember? It was you and your team and that damn Zabuza, that killed Gato in the wave. Karen sighed. Looks like we need a boat. She hated the water. The sound of money was music to Karen's ears, and due to them clearing out an entire bandit gang last night Karen now had more money in her hand than she had ever had. Still, it wasn't much, enough for a few stays at an inn, maybe a charter for a boat to the wave. But most importantly if Karen knew her money, which she did even when blind, enough for a new pair of glasses. And that was after Blondie had insisted on giving the lion's share to the family. So do you know where the wave is? Blondie asked, his hand grabbing hers to help her over a stump. It was like he had a thing for hand-holding, that or he was just a touchy person. Maybe she should let him carry her again. Her feet were hurting. Karen grunted as she hopped over the stump with his help, the warm summer sun piercing through the thick forest canopy mixed well with the moist wind that blew from the river. It's a large island off the coast of the land of fire or the land of tea. It was once a thriving nation filled with ports, but since the third war and the destruction of its sister nation the land of whirlpools it's been in a state of decline. The quickest way for us to get there is to get a boat to take us there. Wow, you sure do know a lot of stuff huh Karen? Blondie smiled at her, though to her it looked like he had one giant tooth that was splitting his face. Kind of like his skeleton was trying to exit his meat suit. And don't you forget it knucklehead, Karen waited for him to take the lead once again, she was sure there was a path or a road that would have led them to the closest town in a less hazardous path, but she couldn't make it out from one slightly less green patch from the next slightly less green patch, so she gave Blondie the simple direction of south while she looked for a mass of chakra. I'm the brains of this operation, and the cute one, great, just great he remembered how to flirt.
That wasn't anywhere near as useful as his jutsu. All that did was make her cheeks warm that he might actually be cute. He was so frustrating, on the one hand he was an idiot, on the other hand he was legitimately the nicest person she had ever met. Nobody else had put up with her this much. You're just saying that cause I'm the only girl you've seen. Karen grumbled as she nudged him southward along the straight line that he had chosen. I saw Miyumi and Futaba. Blondie laughed pushing some branches out of their path. She had given him simple instructions, keep the river on their right. So when they found a port tower or some other fishing village where they could borrow, steal, bargain, haggle, stow away, a boat down river until they could find an actual seafaring vessel. Gee thanks, I appreciate being compared to a five-year-old and a retired Yakuza boss. Karen rolled her eyes, which proved to be a bad idea as the world blurred and made her head spin slightly. This was getting annoying, it was like the entire world was made of jello. Blondie hopped in front of her again, a blonde and orange blob that served as her beacon in the clouded forest. It felt like her eyesight was becoming worse, especially because she couldn't even remember what clarity looked like. What would she do if she couldn't get another pair of glasses? How was she going to read or look at cute boys? She'd have to actually get to know people and judge them by their personality. Holy crap she was a shallow bitch. Still, she had gotten to know Blondie without her glasses, and things seemed okay. Sure he was an idiot, but he was also kind, caring, heroic, and a bunch of other traits that were going to get him killed someday. But he was also reliable. Holy crap I think you're my best friend. Huh? He looked back at her, his voice laced with confusion. What do you mean? You didn't have any friends back in your village? Nope, everybody there hated me for being an outsider all thanks to my stupid red hair. Ah yes, her tragic backstory, perfect for some kind of underdog redemption story where she could prove them all wrong and become an accepted member of the village. As if that had a snowball's chance in hell of happening, she was done done with the village hidden in the grass. Well if it makes you feel any better I like your red hair, it's very pretty. You've said that before, several times actually, he was obsessed with red hair, and she was not going to let him know that she liked it doesn't mean it's any less true. He helped her down from a stump like she was a princess exiting her carriage. Are you sure you weren't a toad? Karen asked, failing to fight away the smile that he was putting on her face. Toad? No, I don't think so. I mean I'm a human right? Blondie asked. Oh, it's just an old Uzumaki fairy tale my mom used to tell me. Oh, can you tell me it? What? No, it's embarrassing, and it's boring no fighting, just girly love stuff, you wouldn't like it. Karen tried to wave him off. We don't have anything better to do. That was a fair point. Fine, Karen sighed and ran a hand through her hair. It's been a while since I've heard it, and if you talk or laugh before I finish I'm going to stop, got it? Yes, ma'am. Blondie smacked his lips shut with a pop and bumbled forward. Right, so a long time ago, there was a princess that lived in a castle. The princess didn't have any friends, and her family was always too busy for her. So she spent most of her days alone, exploring the castle gardens. One day a toad hops out of the pond and a toad hops out of the pond. Karen droned on at first but began to enjoy herself the more she spoke. She croaked like a toad. Hello princess, if you give me a kiss I can make your dreams come true. The toad croaked. Karen said in a raspy voice that tickled the back of her throat. Her efforts earned a stifled chuckle from Blondie, at least he was trying. You are but a toad, why would I kiss you? The princess said, somehow completely fine that there was a talking toad asking for kisses coming out of her pond. Karen smiled to herself, and wouldn't you rather get a kiss from a lady toad? No, my dear, the toad croaked, I have been watching you for a while now and have determined that you are my one true love. Oh, you are too kind Mr. Toad, the princess said apologetically. But I am afraid, that I cannot love you for you are a toad and I am a princess. Then I asked that you simply talk with, the toad begged. Karen cleared the throat and examined the soft light that came in through the forest canopy, it was just past noon now. The princess agreed and talked to the toad until night began to fall. She did so the next day, and the day after that and so on, until the toad became her best friend. And each night the toad would ask her for a good night kiss, but each night she would refuse. Until one day, she realized that she loved the toad, he made her feel special and wanted. So he kissed the toad. Something magical happened when she did, and she found herself kissing not a toad, 
but a beautiful princess charming. I don't understand, the princess gasped. I thought you were a toad. No, Prince Charming laughed as he cupped her cheek gently. I was cursed to take the form of a toad until I received a kiss from my one true love. They then lived happily ever after. Why was the prince cursed? Blondie asked the second she finished. I don't know. Karen frowned. The story didn't really go into it. That or she forgot. Huh, so does that mean you kissed me? Blondie asked. No, I'm tempted to punch you though. Karen crossed her arms and frowned. Maybe I should, could be a great way to get your memories back. I have a feeling that won't help anything, Blondie grumbled rubbing a spot on his head. But why'd you ask if I was a frog? Because you're nice and sweet like Prince Charming, even if you're an idiot. Karen huffed, she shoved the burning of her cheeks into the back of her mind. And don't forget you owe me a new life. Don't worry Karen, I promise you that I'll get you your happily ever after. Stupid idiot prince was way too good at saying random gibberish that made her heart beat. Believe it, you better, she mumbled. She just wanted a house of her own, with a strong, handsome, loving, husband that made enough so that she didn't have to work would be great. Kids optional. Oh, I think I sense a town up ahead. Karen gasped as she felt hundreds of weak chakra signatures, all milling about in the afternoon sun. That meant, food, supplies, and transportation. Really? That's awesome Karen. He grabbed her hand again and began to run. Let's go. I'm so hungry. Karen sighed into the bowl of ramen that Blondie had dragged her to. It was warm, hearty and probably the closest thing to a full meal she had eaten in days. While Miyumi's cooking was good it lacked the flavor and fillingness of ramen. What made you decide to choose this place? I used my nose. Blondie pointed towards his nose as a clump of noodles hung from his mouth. I think I really really like ramen, cause this is so good. Yay, it tastes great. Best part was that it was cheap, especially when she considered how much she got with just one bowl. It was easily a lunch and dinner combo. Karen looked over to Blondie and saw that he was already working on his second bowl. Or maybe it would be an afternoon snack for him. Can we eat this every day Karen? Blondie asked her practically bouncing in his seat. I don't see why not. Instant ramen was especially easy to make especially if they had a reliable heat source. And it was also cheap. And cheap was good. Very very good. We'll buy some when we hit the store. That made Blondie happy if his slurping was any indication. Karen flopped down onto the mattress and sighed at its heavenly softness. She wasn't made for all this wilderness traveling her and Blondie had been doing. She was a princess and needed to be pampered every single day with such luxuries as a bed and running water. She was clean, actually clean for the first time in forever, she had taken a long, long bath and simply enjoyed herself. She ran a hand over her arm and felt its clean smoothness. Shame she wasn't sharing a bed with Blondie, that way she could share her wonderful smoothness. Wait, what was she thinking? It was a good thing they had a room with two beds. She had half expected them to end up sharing a bed because of some sick joke life was playing on her. Was the bath that good? Blondie asked. His usual orange blob exchanged for a blue set of clothing, she couldn't have him walking around wearing a jacket with a giant hole in the middle of it. It was wonderful. Karen laughed flipping onto her back to stare up at the muted ceiling. How'd the packing go? Good, I got almost everything into the bags. Blondie kicked at his slightly overstuffed bag, there were. Are you sure you don't want me to carry more? Nah, it's fine. Karen smiled as she felt the warmness of her bed. She was going to sleep so good tonight. Hopefully with no bandit attack in the middle of the night or some other apocalyptic event. She just wanted one night where she could sleep soundly without having to worry about the world exploding. I'm sorry we couldn't find a place to get you glasses. That's not your fault though, Karen looked his way putting on her best smile. I wasn't surprised that a town of this size didn't have one. We'll just spend some time in Komain City. She couldn't believe their luck. They had found a man willing to take them all the way to Komain City in exchange for Blondie doing a bit of shipwork. Hopefully, he wasn't the seasick type. Now, let's rest up, we have a long day ahead of us tomorrow. She smiled into her bed slipping underneath the soft freshly washed blankets. Oh, this was good, her entire body relaxing like she was being massaged by warm. As Blondie turned off the light and slid into his own bed, he spoke. Hey, Karen? She grunted in response. Huh? He was oddly quiet for a moment, then he sighed. Never mind, I'll talk to you tomorrow. That night Karen dreamed of Blondie feeding her ramen. 
Karen glared at the ugly brown blob that was going to be all she was going to see for the next two days while they traveled downriver. It seemed so fitting that they would be given what was basically a broom closet behind the cargo hold. They even had to climb on top of the cargo just to get to it. She was fairly certain that they were stowaways. Or at least she was Blondie would be actually working. Karen sighed and sat down her pack and began to unroll her bedroll. If she had glasses she'd read, if she had Blondie she'd talk. Instead, all she got to do was stare at the ceiling and try not to puke like the last time she was on a boat. In short, she was going to be doing nothing at all. All she could do was to focus on her mind's eye and see the world through it. Noting the works as they milled about on the deck, Blondie was the easiest to find his next to the crew his chakra was like the sun next to a bunch of candles. But like the sun staring at his chakra was dangerous. That darkness that lurked below his warmth was impossible to ignore. It was the stark difference between a warm summer day and a blizzard. The darkness inside of Blondie was something truly terrifying like a mass of hatred made real. But it was something that she couldn't take her eyes off of like it was calling her luring her into it. Uzumaki. A roar tore through her mind shaking her thoughts and snapping her back to reality. She could feel claw marks on her body deep wounds that went beyond skin deep tearing at her very insides. Then the good of Blondie's chakras swirled back pushing the claws away and freeing her mind. Karen gasped, the lines between the two chakras became as visible as night and day. Blondie's chakra was that good warm inviting chakra, and it was keeping that darkness inside. There was something inside of him something that he was keeping away from the world. And he didn't even know it. She went to wipe her brow but was stopped when she felt a weight pulling on her hand. A chain or at least part of one was hanging from her hand. Wait, no it was coming out of her hand. Was this her chakra? It was. Her chakra could manifest as chains. Okay, Karen, think your mom had to tell you something like this right? Nothing came up, no memory of hey you might randomly grow chains, no reference to why whatever was in Blondie knew that she was an Uzumaki. All that she could think of was what the Uzumaki were known for. Sealing. Did an Uzumaki seal that thing into Blondie? Did Blondie even have a seal? If she could see she could probably find out. The chain crawled back into her hand on its own. She tried to force it back out but nothing happened. Didn't seem very useful anyway. Still, she didn't have anything better to do. Might as well try to figure out how to use this chain that came out of her hand. By the time Blondie had come back down she could make an inch of the weird chakra chain dangle uselessly from the middle of her palm. Hey, Karen. His blonde head popped out from the narrow crawl space that was their door. Did you miss me? No, I did not miss you while I was stuck in this broom closet all day with nothing to do. Karen rolled her eyes and scooted over so that Blondie could sit down. Sleeping was going to be awkward again. I was perfectly happy sitting in here alone. Oh, that was sarcasm idiot. Karen patted the ground beside her. Of course I missed you. Oh, I knew that. Blondie plopped down beside her and shoved a warm bundle of food her way. I was told to bring you this. It was warm, wet, soft, cold, dry, crunchy all at once. But it smelled like food so Karen dug in almost shoveling the food into her mouth. It wasn't the worst thing she'd eaten by a country mile. Thank you. Yay, no problem. Blondie sat next to her, his head banged on the hull of the ship with a satisfying thunk. OWW, oh, your neck is supposed to hold your head up you know? I understand that you have a heavy head that's almost pure bone and it's why your brain is so small but your neck really should be used to it. It's so heavy Karen, Blondie complained rolling his head in her direction. Can't you help? He rolled his giant head onto her shoulder putting as much of his body weight as he could. Karen took another bit of her food and snorted. Just don't start drooling, we're probably going to be sleeping like this. Her leg had already fallen asleep long ago. He took his head off of her and folded his hands in his lap only a vague blur gave Karen the notion that he was twiddling his thumbs. Hey, um can I ask you something? You just did. Karen balled the leather like wrapping her food had been in and tossed it out into the cargo hold. But it's not like we have anything else to do except sleep. Well, I was wondering if you could tell me more about the Uzumaki. Huh? Why? Karen scrunched her face up. Was that dark presence inside of Blondie leaking out? Was this her fault? Well, it's just that whenever you talk about them I get really excited. He smiled at her. It just kind of feels like I'm learning something I should know about Yano. Karen sighed. I don't mind, but are you sure you want to know about a dead clan? 
I mean I could be the last Uzumaki. And if there were others they certainly made no effort in trying to find her. Not that she wanted anything to do with them, to begin with. No, nah, I don't think that's the case. He pointed to himself. I mean I could be an Uzumaki too for all I know. Peefed. Karen snorted. You an Uzumaki? You don't look anything like an Uzumaki. Huh? What do you mean? How do Uzumaki look? Karen held up a strand of her red hair and dangled it in his direction. For starters, all Uzumaki have red hair, not blonde, red. We also don't have regular eyes, Uzumaki eyes range from red to purple, we're also pale. So in terms of looks, you're not an Uzumaki. He was frowning probably. She really couldn't tell, whatever light had managed to find its way into their dark closet was quickly fading. Ooh, man I'd probably look cool with red hair. Being an Uzumaki sounds great. He sounded so happy. It's not really. Karen brought her knees to her chest and frowned. People treat you like an outsider wherever you go even if you were born at the place, all because of some stupid red hair. There were even other redheads in my village. It wasn't fair why was I picked on? Why did they hate me? Just because I was an Uzumaki? I didn't choose to be born this way. Tears fell from her eyes. She didn't want to cry. Not here, not with him. She was the strong smart one. She needed to be in control. She was the one that made things happen. Blondie was just her muscles. He didn't need to know any of this. A blanket was wrapped around her and Blondie pulled her in tight. I'm sorry. Was he crying too? Why was he crying? Just shut up okay. She sniffled burying her head in his shirt again. Her life was shit, but that was no reason to cry about it. All that she could do was try to make a not shit life for herself. And to do that she needed to get Blondie back his memories so she could worm her way into his life like a parasite. I'm happy you were born, just the way you are. I said shut up, now go to sleep. Damn brat, what makes you think you can do this and not get punished? We'd be better off if you were never born. Stay away from him, dear. Stay away from me Naruto. Naruto you idiot. Naruto sit down. Naruto. 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 Naruto? That was his name, wasn't it? The ship groaned, and the dark room he was sharing with Karen was painful cold outside of the blanket they were sharing. He could barely feel his toes. Carefully he pulled his feet back under the blanket, brushing up against Karen's bare feet, and making her squirm under at their coldness. With a groan that sounded like an angry piglet, his red-headed friend dug her face deeper into his shoulder while somehow making certain that most of her face was still covered by the blanket. She looked cute. Even her snoring was cute. Wait that wasn't important right now. Well, it was, probably, but that wasn't the point. He had a name. Karen, hey Karen. I said shut up. Her hand shot up from the blanket and pushed on his face before it dove back down gripping his collar. I'm having a dream where you're cute and not an idiot. You dream about me? A single red eye glared at him from beneath the covers. Only because you're so annoying I dream of the day you're not so loud. Ouch. But hey wait you should be happy about this. Naruto smiled shaking her with his shoulder. I finally remembered my name. Is it the name of some rich and noble prince? She grumbled trying to pull more of the blanket around her. But gave up when he wasn't giving her any more. What? No. It's Naruto. It felt great to say his name again. My name is Naruto believe it. She sighed. Look, I know you like ramen enough to dream about it but there's no way you're named after a ramen topping. Who the hell would name their kid that? It's a ramen topping? Yes, it was the white star thing with the red spiral in it. That's a Naruto. Karen grumbled. So that's not you. Besides if I had to call you Naruto all the time I'd probably be hungry all the time. Aren't you always hungry though? Uzumaki. She half yawned half grumbled smacking her lips twice. Uzumaki eat a lot of food. I eat a lot of food, Naruto said to himself mostly. Naruto Uzumaki, it has a nice ring to it. That woke Karen up. She emerged from the blanket her hung loosely around her face and her eyes were half closed with sleep and half closed with a glare. It looked cute. He should annoy her more often. She was cute when she was mad annoyed at him. Unless you're a rich prince and you want to marry me and take my last name for whatever reason don't call yourself Naruto Uzumaki. It just sounds stupid. Why not a cooler last name like Namikaze or something? Naruto Namikaze? Naruto snorted. That sounds stupid. Naruto Uzumaki sounds so much better. Fine I'll call you Naruto. Karen groaned and dove back into the blanket. No last name until you can actually remember it got it? Don't make stuff up just because it sounds cool. 
She struggled to get comfortable before she groaned and punched him lightly on his leg. Damn it, this is your fault now I can't sleep. It's too damn cold. Naruto just smiled. Well I hope you do get comfortable I like laying like this with you. It's nice. She tensed before she punched him again. I'm going to pretend you didn't say that so this won't be awkward the next time we're forced to share a bed. It's not worth it to save money. That didn't stop her from trying to find the comfortable spot again. Eventually, she was using his shoulder as a pillow again. Fuck it's cold, so did you remember anything else? Just an old guy calling me a brat and being told a way to stay away from people. I wonder what I did. Karen tensed. Probably nothing. People are stupid like that. Don't let it bother you. She yawned her body relaxing. Your brain isn't big enough for you to worry about something like that. Komain City was far from a shining jewel. Less than half of the port city was actually built on land, with the vast majority of the city being built on the bridge that spanned between the islands. Some of the bridges were made of motor and stone, while others were made from the wreckage of ships. Oftentimes whole hulls were turned into shops, homes, or various other buildings. It was fitting for a people that lived just as much on the water as they did off it. Karen stretched in the midday sun as her feet finally touched solid ground. She had missed the feeling of stillness, and actually being able to fully stretch her body. Seriously being trapped in that dull gray room must have made her shrink an inch. Ah, the air feels so good. Even if it did smell like salt, and fish in various states of decay. Yay, Naruto said from her right shouldering both of their bags while she took a moment to get her legs back under her feet. So is the wave? No, it's not. Seriously, you're the one that can actually read the map. This is Komain City. Karen rolled her eyes and folded her arms with a huff. Seriously, Naruto's sense of direction was so bad that was probably how he lost his memories. Still felt weird to think of him as that, and not Blondie. Oh, he did that open mouth thing where he pretends like he understood something. So then, what are we doing here? Karen smiled and grabbed her bag off of Naruto's shoulders. She wasn't so naive as to think that a port city was safe and their generous pile of money was strapped tightly to their chests. That way if some clever pickpocket was able to pickpocket one of them they'd still have half their wealth. Which would suck. We're here because the boat took us here. Karen stuck her tongue out at Naruto. Even if she couldn't exactly see his face she knew he was not amused. But really, we're here for two reasons, well three. First get me some glasses so I can see if you look as stupid as you sound. Hey, what? I'm joking, but I do want to see. Karen gave him a light shove. Two, get a boat that's going to the wave country. And lastly, if we need to wait, find some place to stay that has a warm bed and good food. Ooh, okay. He took her hand, pulling her along down the pier. So what should I be looking for? Look for a place with a lot of shops, preferably a place that looks nice, like on one of the islands, and look for a shop that has glasses on it I guess. She honestly had no clue. We could try asking around for an optometrist, that might be the best way. While Naruto lead her through the web-like streets that were anchored around the islands Karen began to focus, this was her first time being in a city like this. She had felt it as they came into port, but now she wanted to see the city from the inside with her mind's eye. Thousands of candles appeared around her, each on flickering with life and vitality. It was a beautiful sight to behold, even if they paled next to the light that was Naruto's chakra. It was more chakra signatures than she'd seen at any one time, even Konoha which flared to life with powerful ninja paled in comparison to the sheer volume of people that drifted about the port city. So is this a place? Naruto came to a sudden halt on an offshoot of a busy street built out of the wreckage of ships. Somehow, despite the bulk of people living on it the wood barely creaked, even with numerous holes revealing the murky water where the river met the sea below them. Karen shook her head and looked up at the vague direction Naruto was pointing. It looked like the back half of a ship was turned into a shop, with its massive sail turning into free advertisement. Does it say optometrist, or have glasses on it? Sure does. Come on let's go. Before she could speak he pulled her into the shop. The shop smelled of mildew, salt, and old. That was all Karen knew about it as the old miser that ran the place seemed to perk up at the idea of a customer or two. She had been sitting in a chair while he fiddled with knobs and doodads alike to try and get the correct glasses for her. Now theme my dear, the old man slurred, licking his toothless gums for the upteenth time. I believe that I may have a pair of speedicles that may do you, for now, or you could do a special order. 
And I could have a pair just for you in a few days. I just want to see again, Karen said softly. It didn't matter if they were ugly and made her look bug-eyed. Okay it did but she could totally live with whatever let her actually see. At least until she found out where Naruto lived and then shacked up with him and made him buy her a new pair of glasses. Ones with red frames, and we're kind of in a hurry, so I'll take what you got. Very good my dear. The old man clapped his hands and licked his lips again. Just a moment now. Karen watched as his mass of gray hair bumbled about the room, pulling at numerous different boxes and tubes. Until at last, he pulled out a dull brown box that looked like he was holding a rotten fish. Hira, give these a try. The world shifted in clarity, going from blurs of color and motion to slightly fuzzy clarity. She could make out shapes. She could see detail, the wood was no longer just one color, but instead had texture that she could see. She was crying, actually crying. It had been way too long since she had seen any kind of detail, even if things were still kind of blurry, she could still see in detail if she focused and strained her eyes. Wheel Missy? Can ya see? The old man asked his voice sounded more like a whistle than actual speaking. Karen bit her lip and nodded. With laser focus, she stared at the chart on the other side of the room. She could read. For the first time in weeks, she could actually read. They're perfect, I'll take them. She was still crying as she said that. A smile permanently plastered on her face. They make you look kinda funny, Naruto said from his spot in the corner. She had almost forgotten about him. Her traveling companion who had been nothing but a blonde blur up until this point. She felt her heart quicken as she looked at him for the first time. He was still blonde, he still had the blue eyes that she managed to make out on his face a few times before. He wasn't exactly cute, but he wasn't ugly either. Shut up you idiot, I can see now, but you're stuck being an idiot cause they don't sell brains here. No, but I do know a guy. The wrinkly old man hummed tapping his fingers against his cheek, bone. But, e enough of your love ears quarrel, leads talk, money. Karen felt her face heat up, her and Naruto? As if. There was no way that he was anything more to her than a lackey. If he was lucky he might one day get upgraded to brother status. Just tell me how much. After a few minutes of haggling, Karen finally managed to get the price down to something that wasn't horribly overpriced. Karen burst out from the shop, a few tears still clung to her eyes, even as her face was red from embarrassment and her mood spoiled by the cost of her glasses. Can you believe that guy? He totally overcharged me. You got them for half off though. Her oh so very naive companion said, his face twisted in confusion. I thought it was a pretty good price. And that's why I'm the one doing the talking, Karen huffed, she kept looking at Naruto's face, what was with those whisker marks, and did he always have to look so happy? Now come on, let's see if we can find a boat that will take us to the land of waves. She held out her hand for Naruto to take. He stared at her hand for a few moments before he scratched the back off of his head. Uh, do you still need me to guide you? You can see now right? Oh, why did she sound so disappointed? She could see now. She was a strong independent woman and she didn't need Naruto to hold her hand. He was just a means to an end now, a good safe home that wasn't going to use her. And if he couldn't do that, then she had no business with him. Right, well follow me. There's only one bed, Naruto said. His eyes were locked on the hammock that was strung across their room. Don't complain. Karen grumbling sliding her pack onto the ground. They were cheap, and they were leaving today straight to the land of waves. Yay but it means I'll have to sleep on the ground. Naruto sighed and placed his back on the floor as well, as he began to rummage for his bedroll. Since when have I ever made you sleep on the floor when there was an actual bed? Karen crossed her arms and pouted, did she really seem like the kind of girl that would do that? Just force a boy to sleep on the ground? Well she would, but this was Naruto it wouldn't even be the first time they fell under the same blanket. Nah, we're sharing the hammock. Really? Are you sure? I haven't bathed in a couple of days. And I have? No, we're going to be sleeping in the same bed, all dirty and gross right next to each other. Karen blinked after she said all that. This was probably why people kept saying they were a couple, wasn't it? It couldn't be further from the truth. Naruto was just like an overly eager puppy to her. One that she was trying to train into a loyal guard dog. It was perfectly natural for people to share a bed with their pets. Hee hee, Naruto laughed rubbing his nose with a wide smile on his face. She liked that smile, even if it did look stupid. Thanks Karen you're the best. 
Great, why was her face feeling hot? And why did she keep looking at stupid Naruto's stupid face with that stupid smile? She needed to stop looking at him and look at something else, but the only thing here was the dull wood of the ships inside. She should have bought a book while she was on shore. Tell me something I don't know. Uh, you look cute when you pout? I was being facetious. I don't know what that means. Of course, he didn't. On the night of their second night at sea, the ship was creaking as a storm appeared out of nowhere and began to thrash the ship like it was a child's plaything. It had been going too smoothly, she should have to know that it was going to end horribly. The hammock served as a dampener to the ship's tossing, somehow staying attached as wave after wave crashed into the ship sending it every which way. Karen held onto Naruto for dear life. Why her? Why did this have to happen to her? It was sunny just a few days ago. She didn't want to die here in the middle of the ocean thanks to some stupid storm. Thunder cracked and Karen screamed. It was so close that she could feel the air tingle with its energy. She pulled herself tighter to Naruto if such a thing was even possible, as they were both bound to the hammock in a desperate attempt to not be sent tumbling every which way. Why me? Karen cried burying her face in Naruto's shirt, her glasses the only thing that stopped his shirt from being stained with her tears. What did I do to deserve this? She wasn't even a horrible person. If karma existed it was a stupid asshole that couldn't count worth a damn. She had used up at least three lives worth of bad luck by now. It'll be okay Karen, Naruto half mumbled into her hair. He had his arms wrapped tight around her in a vain attempt to shelter her from the storm. Don't worry, it's just a storm, nothing bad is going to happen. He was going to jinx it and fuck everything up. Still, she managed to calm down after a few long breaths. She could feel the sailors toiling above deck, scrambling to make sure nothing bad would happen to the ship. There was a sudden rise that kept going up and up and up. Then for a brief moment, the entire ship was floating, before the crash and the entire ship splintered into a hundred pieces. She tried to find out what was going on. She tried to hold on to Naruto, she tried to stay sane. But the waters took her, pulling her towards and away from Naruto. Rain poured down on top of her and it was impossible to know which way was up when the water sent her towards. She clawed at everything, Desperate to find something to cling onto, something that floated, something that had a hopefully still alive Naruto holding onto it as well. She found a plank or something, it was wooden, rough, and gave her splinters, but most importantly it floated. The world was nothing but darkness, rain, and ocean. Naruto. Karen shouted, desperately trying to keep her head out of the water. Where was he? Had he to be here somewhere right? This wasn't the end of their journey, was it? No, she needed him to be alive. With a desperate focus, Karen searched for him with her mind's eye. It was easy to find Naruto, his chakra was like a second sun to her, even that terrifying beast that lurks within him was a welcome sight compared to the storm that raged around her. He was close, but getting further away as though the sea was trying to keep them apart. Naruto. Karen shouted, getting splashed with seawater the moment she opened her mouth. No response. Was he okay? Did he get knocked out again? She kicked her legs in a vain attempt to get closer to him, but she could do nothing to fight against the storm. She had to do something, anything. The chain. The floodgate opened, two chains shot out from her back like extra limbs, glowing a soft green that ignited the sky. They honed in onto Naruto and wrapped around him, moving through the water as easily as they did through air. It was impossible to tell if she was pulling him to her, or if she was pulling herself to him, as the sea continued to rage. They would get through this. They had to. She got glimpses of Naruto's blonde hair thanks to the glimmer of her chains, but more than that his warm chakra enveloped her, and she allowed herself to bask in its warmth once more, well aware of the darkness that was nipping at her heels. It was better than the bitter cold of the sea. With one arm wrapped around Naruto's body, he wasn't moving. She gave him the lion's share of her own personal life raft, her chain was wrapped tightly around him. I'm not going to lose you okay, we'll get through this. She was in for a long night filled with nothing but rain, wet, cold, and misery, Naruto's chakra was her only saving grace. A light fog blanketed the land, sapping away what little heat and joy there could be found on the beach. The sand was thick, closer to the gravelly shores of a creek than a proper seaside paradise, and various items little the shore as though it was the ocean's dumping ground with wooden planks and entire trees uprooted and carried for thousands of miles before they crashed ashore on this lost beach. 
Naruto awoke, to his face being pushed up against the sand, his body numb with cold, while his stomach twisted violently from the motion. What happened? Where was he? Why was he in the ocean? A crude burning bile lurched from his mouth, as his stomach demanded he moved out the cold ocean and do something. His entire body was awake now the events playing through his mind in a jumbled cliff show of shouting and screaming, their boat had crashed. He puked and wiped his mouth. Karen, she had tried to save him. He needed to find her. Just like he needed to find Sasuke. That word was branded into his mind by a white hot iron. It meant so many things. Friend, brother, traitor, teammate, jerk, rival. No that was important right now. Karen, he needed to find Karen, she was, she was important. Whoever Sasuke was, he was in the past. Karen was now, and she, she needed him. Karen? Naruto shouted, coughing up more of the salty bile. He wasn't sure where the liquid was coming from. Perhaps both his stomach and his lungs were trying to evacuate themselves at the same time. Karen, no response. She had to be here somewhere right? He had to find her. Ignoring the ache in every part of his body Naruto began to move along the beach. He had to find her. He had to. Karen, there were bits of the boat around them, or at least bits of a boat. It was hard to tell if they were all from the same one. But if he was here, then Karen had to be too. There was just no way that she wasn't. The wind blew bringing back that biting chill that sucked the strength from his bones. A whistling sound from the rocky cliff that sandwiched the beach to the ocean drew his attention. And then he saw her. Karen, Naruto shouted, his heart beat with joy and worry all at once. He found her, he found her, he stumbled, as his legs kicked up more of the gravel with each step forward. He came to a crashing slide next to her, the round rocks providing no cushion. It was Karen, her red hair was impossible to miss, even as a bit of seaweed stuck out of it. She looked pale, paler than normal, and her lips were blue. She was cold to the touch, barely warmer than the sea. A panic washed over Naruto. No, she couldn't be dead. She, she couldn't. How did he know that she was dead? What was it? Damn, why didn't he remember anything useful? Karen, he grabbed her pulling her up onto his lap, shaking her shoulder as lightly as his shivering hands would let him. Hey, Karen wake up. Karen, please wake up. Her eyes flashed open, they were bloodshot, and then she coughed, salt water exiting her lungs before she passed out again. She was alive. Relief flooded over Naruto as he felt a tear begin to fall from his eye. She's alive, but she could still die. He needed to keep her warm. He needed a fire, and someplace dry. Securing her onto his back Naruto began to move forward, his wet jacket providing what small amount of warmth it could to Karen. He had a lot of ground to cover, and hopefully, he could find a place to get dry and warm. Over the course of his journey, the fog began to wane, being pulled out to the sea before it would surge back in once more. Tangled brown plants and trees both alive and dead clung to the top of the cliffs their branches forever facing away from the sea due to the ocean breezes. A thousand smaller islands began to appear out in the ocean. All of them were moss-covered hunks topped with a white icing of bird shit. Ships, both small and large began to appear along the shore, some large, some small, others little more than splinters, while some lucky few looked to be largely intact while still submerged in the water. A few even made it all the way to the shore before they came to a stop. It was one such ship that Naruto decided to enter, was a small ship split in half, with its front sticking out of the sand like it was buried up to its neck. The rear of the ship blocked a small alcove in the cliffside, that would be sheltered from the wind. To get to the entrance he had to squeeze between the ship and the cliff. He was rewarded with a dry, place protected from the elements. Welcome home Karen, well at least for now. The fire roared with a dull ferocity, sending a light gray pillar of smoke out into the open air. Some of their clothing rested near the flames drying, flames dancing ever closer. Naruto munched on the bit ration he had managed to salvage from one of the ships. He was fairly certain that it wasn't spoiled. Or at least he hoped as much considering it's all he had eaten in the past hour, for all he knew these things could be a hundred years old. Karen was positioned as close to the fire as he dared to let her, she was wrapped snuggly in whatever dry cloth he could scrounge up. Hopefully, she wasn't going to be mad at him for losing everything. She should be grateful, he technically saved her life. Naruto? Karen groaned, her eyes blinking open for the first time. She stirred turning around quickly, 
her still bloodshot eyes turning to look at him. Karen. Naruto jumped up and sprinted towards her kicking some of the thick sand at her as she came to a stop. You're okay, you're okay right? She glared at him before she shot up, going from laying down to standing so fast she skipped the steps in between. No, I'm not okay. You idiot. Naruto took a step back, some instinct in the back of his mind telling him that he was about to be hit hard. Karen wait I, no shut up. Karen growled walking forward, this is all your fault. If I hadn't found you I wouldn't have been on that ship. Because I wouldn't have been trying to go to the wave of all places. I'd probably have a bed of my own I'd probably actually have glasses. Instead, all I have is some idiot that is too stupid to realize that he's cursed to ruin my life at every turn. She took a step forward and began to hit him on the chest, her blows lacked fury and strength, and quickly died down to nothing but pats. Her head fell to his chest and her breathing turned to sobs. Handfuls of his shirt were gripped tightly in her knuckles. Damn it, damn it, damn it. They fell to the ground and his arms pulled her into a hug. What was he supposed to when she was crying? He didn't know. What was going on? Karen? Shut up. She shook him with all of her might. Just shut up and let me be happy that you're alive for half a second. Okay? Yay. Sure. Okay. He had no idea how long Karen cried into his chest, or when he had wrapped the blanket around them both. His eyes locked onto her shivering form. The sky began to darken and the chill fog began to roll back in. A dull roar from the crashing waves signaled the coming of the tide. Karen? He dared to ask finally. She gave as happy of a grumble as she could manage. When I was um taking off some of your clothes to dry, I um noticed that you um have a lot of bite. You saw them? Karen spun, away from him tripping on her own two feet. She pulled the blanket around her tightly, exposing him to the cold air. You saw them didn't you? What are they? He should not have said that. He should not have said that. But she had kept them hidden from him, not once had she ever been without a long sleeve shirt, or some other garment covering her arms. They're horrible and ugly and that's all you need to know about them. She pulled the blanket up around her tighter, covering her entire body save her head. Her two red eyes glared at him with all the hatred she could muster. Naruto scratched the back of his head and looked towards the sand. This was different, different from when Karen was being annoyed or bossy with him. Those were fine, he even liked those moments as her personality shined out. But this, this was different. I'm sorry, I just wanted to make sure you're okay. With a huff, Karen turned away from him her red hair dancing in the firelight. It was impossible not to look at her, like his eyes were drawn to the way her hair stuck out on one side, or the way it flew away from her neck like a bird's feather or the way her nose turned red when she was mad. She was cute when she was mad, but this this was different. She upset with him, what was he supposed to do? Talking might make her worse, leaving would really make her mad, getting close would probably just make it worse. Tears pooled in her eyes and she looked at him, then with a sniffle, she pulled the blanket over her head sealing herself away from him. He messed up, he didn't know why, or how, just that she was sad and it was his fault. It made his stomach feel like he had eaten a pit that was swallowing everything in his body leaving him an empty vessel. I'm hungry, Karen mumbled, the sky was dyed orange from the setting sun, and their clothes had long since dried, but Naruto only dared to tend the fire, lest he rouse Karen's ire. Oh right. Naruto jumped up scrambling over to what little food he had managed to gather. It's not much, and I'm not sure if it's good but. She ignored him and ripped a sealed jar out of his hands, tearing off the lid with a pop. She sniffed it once, her eyes locked onto its contents for a moment before she shrugged and began to shovel some kind of a purple jelly into her mouth with her hand. It's not bad, she slurred, a bit of jelly clinging to her mouth. Not good, but I've had worse. Are you done being mad at me? She glared at him from under the blanket, her jelly-covered fingers frozen above the lid of the jar. For now, but don't push it, I'm still blaming you for everything. Yay, say do you know where we are? Naruto scooted on his knees towards her, digging his hand into the sands. Well, considering all I've seen is your ugly blur, a blur of warm I'm calling a fire, some sandy blur, and a blurred background. Oh and I can hear the ocean, so I yay I have a good idea of where we are. She stared into the jar, trying to scrape out as much of its contents as possible. Her hand now stained a light purple color halfway to her elbow. You do? Where? Naruto jumped. Yep, she tossed the jar to the side and began to wipe her hand on jacket to remove the jelly. 
Okay, so maybe she was still kind of mad at him. She flicked back her blanket made cowl and gave him a giant smile. We're fucking lost. Oh, he really should have seen that coming. So what do we do now? I'm going to relax and pretend that this is all just a horrible dream and that I'm safe and sound asleep in a nice warm bed with my glasses nearby. She shrugged, reaching for her outer layer of clothing. At least for tonight, tomorrow I'll probably blame you some more and try to figure out where we are. That sounded like a good plan. Besides, tea was getting dark. Oh, hey want to see the sunset? She sighed her look was heavy and weary. Honestly, I just like to see period, but sure, just turn around and let me get dressed. And thanks for you know, not taking off my underwear. I figured if I did that one of us would end up dead. And here I thought you couldn't teach an idiot new tricks. He led her up the back of the boat, their feet dangling that they used as an arm and headrest. Without the fog, the dangerous beauty of their location could be seen in whole. Boats of all shapes and sizes were half swallowed or thrown onto rocks, their hulls splintered and deformed from the violent seas around them. The destruction wasn't localized either, it was everywhere on the beach, the entire horizon was filled with wreckage and spires of rocks jutting out from the sea like destructive fingers trying to tear apart everything. The furthest object he could see was a large ship unmoving, its mast replaced by a stone pillar as though a giant picked it up and left it there. The water itself was anything but forgiving, the ocean waves crashed into the rocks, shattering like glass before forming up again and rushing ever forward, at times the waves converged smashing into another, then fleeing away. But most prominent were the whirlpools that appeared and vanished at random, some lasting for minutes only to form again seconds later and collapse just as fast. Their scars, Karen swallowed, her eyes glued on the setting sun. Tears were being formed, the bite marks I mean. He stared at her, trying to read her face. She rolled up one of her sleeves and showed a bite mark to him. I have the ability to give people some of my life force when they bite me, kind of like a reverse vampire, it hurts and leaves an ugly scar but it heals them too. And all those bites? Were they from your village? Naruto asked. His eyes were locked onto the mark. He felt a bit of bile rise up the back of his throat, it wasn't that they were disgusting, but just the thought of someone doing that to Karen was enough. She nodded. Yay, when my mom came to the village she offered her ability as payment, they gave her and my dad a shitty little shack, near the river. When they died it became my responsibility. And why did you freak out about them? Cause they're ugly. She rolled down her sleeve and looked at him, her eyes shaking as she tried to focus on him. And I don't like people seeing them. He felt something bubble up inside of him again. That same notion that came when he thought of that name Sasuke, that same feeling he did when he first met Karen and the words flowed from his mouth without a thought. Don't worry Karen, I promise that you'll never have to use that ability ever again. Her eyes went wide and her mouth that smile of hers that she only seemed to give him. It was abrasive, rude, and full of mirth. She gave a laugh and scooted towards him, her head falling to his shoulder, eyes facing the setting sun. Don't make promises you can't keep Naruto if it means saving your life I want you to promise you'd let me use my power on you. He stared at her head, Enjoying the small amount of warmth she just seemed to bring everywhere and the way her hair tickled his arm. Okay, but I'm the only one allowed to bite you okay? You aren't the boss of me Naruto, but sure. You're the only one I'd let bite me. This was a weird relationship stage. It was official. Karen had no idea where the fuck they were. They could be on the mainland or even an island in the middle of the ocean that people avoided because ships seemed to magically explode whenever they got near the damn place. She certainly hoped that this was just an angry piece of coast on the mainland. With a sigh Karen focused, gathering strength in her mind's eye, stretching it as far as she could searching for any human. Anybody at all, she might as well be looking for the stars during a stormy night. There was her, and then there was Naruto. But other than that there was nothing. Wait, no, she had. Did you find anything? Karen snapped open her eyes to glare at her traveling companion, or at least the vague general shape of him. She missed her glasses. It was hard to tell if he was actually as afraid of her as he should be. Not that he should be afraid of her, damn idiot was growing on her in the worst ways possible. I did until some loud mouth interrupted me. Oh, do you know where they are? I can go shut them up for you. Fantastic he was getting snarky with her. If it was anybody else she'd probably throw her shoe at them. If she had shoes. Ha, ha, ha. Karen breathed sliding her tongue between her teeth. 
She adjusted her sitting and tried to relax again. I think I see something, but no people. Just give me a second to find out what it is. Oh okay. He sounded like a puppy that just got told it wasn't playtime. Both confused and disappointed, she was not his source of entertainment. Even if she wasn't entirely sick of spending time with him. But that was an internal debate for when she wasn't trying to be responsible and saving their lives. Back into focusing. Now that she knew there was something there it was easy to find. Chakra, it was old and dusty like opening a box that had been shut tight for years. It wasn't human, or at least not in the general sense, it was from a human, that much was certain. She expanded her view, taking in as much of the chakra as she could find. It was a massive array of long swirling rivers of chakra that was flowing in every direction. The more she looked at it the more the patterns began to appear, it looked like a giant seal was woven into the earth. But it was broken in places. A few cracks, a few missing paths and whatever the seal once did was lost. I think, she didn't know what to think. No, she knew exactly what to think, its name was as present in her mind as Naruto's warm chakra was. But she wanted to be wrong, she wanted to be very very wrong and that they weren't where she thought they were. I think I see a city, but I don't think anybody lives there. Should we go check it out though? There might be a clue to where we are. Naruto offered her a hand up. She could easily make out the white of his teeth even without her glasses. When you smile like that does it hurt? Huh? He tilted his head like a confused puppy. Why would it hurt? I always smile like that. Honestly I don't think it's possible for me to smile as big as you do. My mouth is too small. She stroked her chapped lips to gauge the size of her mouth. Wait, no this wasn't important. She needed to stop thinking about Naruto's mouth and how it compared to hers. Anyway yay, let's head towards the city. There might be a bee something there. Like food, or a bed, or a boat, or a map. Or something. Uzu Shiogakir, Naruto said loudly. Any idea where that is? Karen groaned, placing her head into her palm. It was all she could do to not cry. She hated when she was right. She really really hated it. Remember how you wanted to know a lot about the Uzumaki? Yay? Well, welcome to the land of whirlpools home of the Uzumaki, current population us. This could not be any worse. They were stuck on an island, that just plain didn't have people on it. Or at least none on this side of the island. For all of Karen's lack of enthusiasm, Naruto had just as much enthusiasm and then some. He jumped nearly a foot in the air cheering. What no way. Awesome. You idiot, Karen growled. Don't you know what this means? We're stuck on an abandoned island. Ah, oh, come on Karen don't be like that. Naruto whined she could hear him slapping his legs as he flailed about. There has to be something here that can get us off the island, how did everybody else leave when they abandoned it? Fine, whatever, we'll go into the ruined city and find a bunch of rocks and stuff. She stomped forward along the batted main road that led into the city. Oh, maybe we'll find a wrecked boat that we can use to sink and end up right back where we started. She tripped on a bit of uneven ground. Naruto was there in a heartbeat catching her in that tender way he so often did. Once again he wrapped his hand around hers and led the way. I don't understand why you're not excited about being here. Because being an Uzumaki has done nothing but make people hate me, because of my stupid red hair. She tightened her grip on Naruto's hand, bastard was way too good at making her open up. I don't understand why you're so excited. I mean, you're the only Uzumaki I know, and you saved my life, you're awesome, nice, kind. Well most of the time, okay some of the time, but mostly I just I don't know I feel excited whenever we talk about them. Besides, he gave her that giant grin of his that caused the temperature to rise at least 2 degrees. I like your hair, it's really pretty. Thanks, but just because it's pretty doesn't mean it isn't a pain in the ass. Karen ran her free hand through her hair. Her cheeks and ears felt warm, heart drumming just enough for her to feel it. And she couldn't help but smile. It stands out, gets me in trouble, and is always a mess. No matter how much I comb it one side always ends up sticking up. I'm sure it looks great when you actually have a comb. That coming from somebody that has permanent bedhead is a bit underhanded. Can I give you a compliment without you breaking it down? Nope. Winding twisting roads that seemed to be incapable of going straight, weaved its way through the decrepit city like a giant snake. Not a single building was made of wood. All of them were dull gray blocky monoliths that stood in contrast to the winding street. But each building was unique in its own way, specifically built to stand where it stood, 
and etched with wild spirals that climbed up them like stony ivy. Even though the people were long gone, its structure still stood, and will stand for many more years to come. Karen closed her eyes, trusting Naruto more than she should to lead her down a stable path. Now that she was inside the city she could see its chakra for what it really was. A giant seal, not just the chakra but the city itself. One single major pathways of chakra flowed through the city on top of the only road that branched and forked and turned back into itself, branching into the buildings where they traced the stone-like vines climbing every structure. Now that she could see the chakra, she could feel it in the air. But what was it holding? Was it holding anything? What could such a vast array be holding? Did she even want to know? And could it still hold it? Was that even its purpose? Could there even be something so massive that they needed an entire city to seal it? No, the seal had to have some alternative purpose. Unfortunately, her knowledge of sealing was limited. Hey Karen, Naruto said shaking her out of her rapport. He pointed up a hill where a massive structure loomed. What do you think that is? Karen blinked, she could still see the lines of chakra as clearly as she could in her mind's eye, overlaid perfectly on top of the streets and buildings. They were standing in a massive river of chakra, leading towards the point where Naruto was pointing. She swallowed, her mouth suddenly dry. I think that's the nexus. She could feel it calling to her. Something was there. Something that was hers. Do you think we should go check it out? She could only nod. The nexus point hummed as the river of chakras swirled around it, diving in and out of the massive stone building. It was both the most impressive and most destroyed building, with half of its massive dome missing. It was asymmetrical in its design with soft flowing curves crashing into harsh geometrical shapes that were only compounded by the destruction that had been wrought. The ground was littered with mass spirals made from smoothed river stone that also seemed to draw the chakra into something. It called to her, whatever was inside of there was calling to her. Karen, she heard Naruto call after her. She ignored him, walking forward intent on her goal. Are you okay? Yay, I'm fine. She turned to look at him. She couldn't see his chakra and it was almost impossible to see him through the swirling tides that engulfed both of them. Don't you feel that though? That energy? I guess, Naruto shrugged following after her. Once they were within the threshold of the building it gave off a dull hum, and dull blue lights lit up the hallway, one of the few straight paths in the entire city. Lining both sides of the hallway were corpses. It wasn't the first they had seen here, but it was the first time they saw ninja. Each had a simple spiral carved into a headband or piece of armor. There were no enemies, no foreign ninja, no missing nin. All of the corpses here were ninja loyal to their village killed by another ninja loyal to the village. What happened here? Karen wasn't sure which one of them asked that question. But neither one could know for certain, there is something that would be lost to annals of time. The light of the midday sun shined through the shattered dome bathing the room in a warm light highlighting the colorful room that looked like six rainbows had a party and puked all over everything. Art and seals became one in here with massive murals being made of dozens of intertwining seals. And it all led to the back, where a throne made of dull green glass sat empty, at its feet were several corpses that looked to have been thrown aside. When she was but a few feet away the throne pulsed and the chakra in the air fell towards it like a wave. The entire seal shook. It left Karen feeling breathless, her hair standing on end as her entire body tingled with static electricity. This was what was calling her. This throne. Naruto stood next to her, equally breathless and just as much in awe of the seat. I kind of want to sit on it. He walked past her, striding with that half overly confident half completely stupid gait he had when he was doing something stupid. When he touched the throne it pulsed and a warning flailed in Karen's mind. Wait Naruto don't, too late. The throne shined red, the air charged with electricity, and thunderstruck exploding at the feet of Naruto sending him tumbling backward. His body twitching. Ow, Naruto groaned his face buried in the ground. What the hell is wrong with that thing? I just wanted to sit on it. I think, Karen swallowed. I think only an Uzumaki can sit on it, or at least I think only I can sit on it. Wait, what, are you? She ignored Naruto and pressed forward confident that the throne was for her, that it was calling to her and her alone. He just happened to overhear. This was the birthplace of the Uzumaki, her father was an Uzumaki, her mother was an Uzumaki. She was an Uzumaki, she touched the throne, it touched her, for a moment she was the seal, she was the city, she felt its ache, its pain. 
and what it could do. The throne welcomed her, glowing a brilliant green that flared with the chakra around them, the ancient seals and symbols alighting one after another. Soon the city was once again filled with chakra and lights. Then there was a massive throng, and the seal itself, the entire seal complex which was really just thousands upon thousands of smaller seals woven together, sprung to life. Through her mind's eye and the missing portion of the dome, she could see what its purpose was. A massive barrier that covered the entire island. Had the seal been maintained, it would have been impenetrable. But now it was as useful as a leaky roof, with massive holes scatter about it. All hail Karen Uzumaki, rightful queen of the Uzumaki, long may she reign. A thousand voices chanted in unison. Wait what? Karen shot from the throne and stared at it, hoping to get some kind of an answer, some kind of anything from the inanimate object. Dust fell from the ceiling and the ground shook as the center of the room began to twist open as ancient gears sprung to life. What's happening? What was that voice? And why did they call you queen? Naruto sputtered from the ground, crawling as to avoid the opening gap in the floor. Several small pedestals appeared, all but one of them were empty. Karen walked towards it, her steps echoing where once they did not, as though the entire palace was bowing to her. On the pedestal was a necklace, or a pendant or something, made out of a solid green stone. It was hers, or at least she thought it was. The stone was smooth and light in her hands, and she found herself slipping it around her neck without a second thought. Below it was a piece of paper with some kind of scribbling on it. Hey Naruto can you read this? Huh? He groaned walking towards her, probably just as confused as her if not more so. I guess so. He took the paper unfolding it gently. Let's see, I owe you one scroll of seals and other bullshit. Kashina Uzumaki, P.S. The other stuff was already taken, just be happy I left you the stupid necklace. That bitch, Karen huffed folding her arms. A scroll like that could have been worth a lot of money. Hell, a secret scroll full of sealing from the Uzumaki could have bought her three castles. Probably, she didn't really know what the black market price for these kinds of things. Hey, at least you got a cool necklace out of it. Naruto poked her new necklace. But what was with those voices and the whole queen? The ground shook again. Dust fell from the dome. An earthquake. A big one. Shaking the very foundation of the city. It was the chakra it was running wild. And growing in ferocity. Now that it had woken up. It wanted out. The cracks in the seal were splitting consuming it. We need to run. Karen grabbed Naruto's hand and pushed him forward. Go. Quick get us out of the city. Now, to further punctuate her point part of ceiling collapsed, shattering the throne, which only made things worse. Much much worse. The ground crumbled beneath their feet. Naruto got the point. He ran, pulling her along with him. Bouts of flames shot out of the ground. Lightning struck. Earth formed. Tornadoes ripped. Water swallowed buildings whole. An apocalypse of chakra. The barrier was failing, its already damaged form burning away like a paper. But among all the chaos, a single stream of chakra has lit the way, heading down towards the river. Head towards the river. Naruto. Right. A bolt of lightning tore through the earth where they once stood moments ago. The city was dying because of her. No, that wasn't right it was already dead, she was just finishing it off. As they sprinted towards the river the nexus or temple behind them shuddered, sinking down into the ground deeper by the second. Buildings fell like dominoes one falling meant the next one was soon to fall. The entire road seemed to crawl, bursting free from its earthly binds and bending into the sky, floating for a few moments before crashing down like someone was shaking a blanket free of dust. The chakra led them to a small boat surrounded by calm waters, even as the river was either freezing or evaporating. There, Karen pointed, urging Naruto forward. Get us in the boat. Right. He pulled her forward, scooping her up into his arms in the classic princess pose, despite her protests. Hang on tight, I can jump to ya no? She screamed even as they landed on the boat feet first. It shook violently, nearly tipping over at the sudden shift in weight. Karen fell to the side grabbing onto it for dear life. Now what? There had to be something else. There were no sails, no paddles, no nothing. Just a small boat, against a raging river of ice and fire. The chakras swirled around them gathering, it was calm, controlled, deliberate. All hail, Karen Uzumaki, last queen of the Uzumaki. A thousand voices droned as one being. For she has set us free. K. 
Karen could do nothing but scream as the water around the boat shifted creating a wave beneath them. Wait, hold on a second. The voices did not listen. The wave moved, sliding across the land and bathing them in steam as they joined the main river, pushing them forward out towards the ocean and away from the falling city. What the hell is happening? Naruto, shouted, holding on for dear life. He only had one hand on the boat, his knuckles were turning white. I don't think I can hold on much longer. Karen was not faring much better. Naruto slipped. She let go for just a second, she couldn't lose Naruto. They were going to get through this together. A chakra chain stuck out from her hand wrapped tightly around the wooden bench, while her own hand gripped Naruto tightly. In the distance, she watched as the last bit of Uzushiogakure fell below the ground. She just hoped the voices didn't send her into the open sea. We are never getting on another boat again. Karen screamed pulling her head out of the soft sand that covered much of the shore they landed on. A line of tall thin trees melded with the sand so that the border between forest and beach was indistinguishable. The mist was thick enough to be noticeable, but light enough that they could still feel the warmth of the sun basking down on their backs. Naruto sat up next to her, staring up at the sky wide-eyed. Sounds good to me, but what if we're on an island? We swim, water walk, learn to talk, to fish or make a bridge. Naruto had a lot of chakra, he could probably walk across the ocean, if he didn't have horrible chakra control that is. He should learn an earth jutsu, one called make Karen a bridge. Just no more boats. The vessel that they had taken, was now beached with a splintered hull and most of it actually still at sea, given how the aged vessel began to decay on the last leg of the journey. Karen closed her eyes, to her relief there were people, a lot of people, all milling about in a city or port nearby. Not one of them felt very strong, at least not by ninja standards. But that was probably a good thing. Come on let's go get food. Huh? Where are we going? Naruto asked scrambling after her before he fell in stride beside her. And do you want me to take your hand? I want you to carry me, feed me, give me glasses, a warm bed, a warm bath, a working toilet, I just want to be done wandering around without a home. At this point, her old village might even be a welcome sight. No, she wasn't that desperate. She grabbed Naruto's hand and squeezed tight. But I guess you making sure I don't trip will do for now. Just point me in the right direction. Naruto shouted cheerfully. His stomach gave a growl that lasted far longer than it should have. And please tell me we're close? I'm so hungry. Just keep walking along the beach, we should end up there soon enough. Karen gestured in the vague direction of the town. This was getting old. All her and Naruto were doing was finding a town and getting lost, kicked out, followed by wandering through the wilderness. When on earth was it going to end? How much longer until she got a home? A place where she could stay and not have to worry about things like where her next meal was, or if she'd have to sleep in the rain again. She really didn't want a lot. So queen of the Uzumaki? Naruto asked his gait somewhere between a jog and a stroll. His rough hand was wrapped tightly around her own. What the hell are you talking about? Karen glared in his vague direction. Why can't she have her glasses back already? She only saw Naruto's slightly ugly mug for like three days and that was far too little time to figure out if he really was actually maybe sort of cute. The ghosts, that necklace, the whole last queen of the Uzumaki thing? Oh and that note from that Kashina lady. Naruto turned sharply. Avoiding a large log seemed a bit out of place along the beach's soft sand. Woo! Karen flicked the necklace that hung on her chest, the palm-sized stone shone with every step. I'm queen of a pile of rocks in the middle of the ocean and a bunch of dead dudes, such an honor. You get sassy when you're hungry. I'd say you're stupid when you're hungry but that's a 24-hour thing with you. Karen rolled her eyes and let out a sigh. I'm just going to sell this necklace and see if I get at least buy his lunch with the damn thing. But it's, it's mine, and I'm going to sell it for ramen money, if you have a problem with that then I'll just eat your half. She could practically taste it, a nice big bowl of ramen filled to the brim with every topping on the menu complete with extra everything. If this necklace buys me ramen then it's the first good thing me being an Uzumaki has done for me. The Great Naruto Bridge Naruto examined the plaque on the large bridge that was directly connected to the main street of the village, pumping in fresh produce and trade. To honor Team 7 of Konoha that saved our village, it still smelled like any port city, stained with rotten fish guts. So you were named after a bridge? Karen smacked her lips, hands clutched over her stomach so that she wouldn't double over in hunger, 
or eat Naruto for wanting to read the stupid plaque on the stupid bridge. Hey, Naruto pouted walking back over towards her. What if the bridge is named after me? Did you ever think about that? Who would name a bridge after you? She held out her hand, waiting for Naruto to grab it again. Naruto pouted and turned with a sharp huff. Yay well. Whoa, Naruto. A short boy with a hat on came running up to them. Holy crap he really did have a bridge named after him. It's been a long time. Oh hey is this your girlfriend? A clue. Finally a clue on as to who the hell Naruto is. And now she was back on the path of finally having a home. After all, Naruto had a bridge named after him. That meant he was important and had a hero. Oh, wait didn't that also mean he was from Konoha? That was both great and horrible. Wait you know Naruto? Well yay, he saved our village when he beat Gato. The boy spun flailing his arms. I'm Inari by the way, and who are you? I'm Karen, I've been traveling with Naruto for a while. Karen smiled, it just had to be a kid, she hated kids. They were rude, snobbish and couldn't pay attention worth a damn. At least this one seems slightly mature. Hey, Inari, Naruto coughed. Um, so I kind of lost my memories, and stuff. Do you think you can tell me where I'm from? Really? Inari gasped. Wait I know, come to the house. My mom and grandpa will be happy to see you and we might even be able to help you get your memories back. Oh, and it's almost dinner time anyway. I'm sure my mom made enough for at least two more people. At least if you don't get in another food eating contest with Sasuke. He grabbed Naruto's spare hand forming a three person train, steamrolling them out of the village. A lot's happened around here ya know. My grandpa says that the village is really coming around and that soon we'll be back to the glory days. We kept trying to go see you guys but stuff keeps happening. He's already built three houses. Wait, can you tell me about me? Naruto asked, a smile on his face. He squeezed her hand tighter. I mean I still don't know who I am or where I'm from. Oh well that's easy. You and your team came from Konoha to protect my grandpa while he built the bridge. The new buildings near the bridge began to fade, as the older buildings of the tower began to appear, little more than shacks with a fresh coat of paint. Naruto looked so happy to finally learn about who he is. Wait who was one, my team? No way you really did forget everything. Inari took a sharp turn down a dirt path. Well, let's see there. There was your sensei, he's Kakashi he looked really strong but was also really lazy he spent most of his time laying in our bed and limping around. Then there was Sasuke you guys didn't get along and he was a lot cooler than you. Then there was the girl Sakura. I think you had a crush on her or something. Wait Naruto was teammates with Sasuke? That same Sasuke that saved her from that bear? That was, good right? Wait, where was the heart throbbing that normally came when she thought about that moment? Did Sasuke have dark hair and kind of pretty looking? Yay, he had dark hair, and Sakura liked him a lot. My mom kept saying it was a hopeless love triangle and that she felt sorry for all three of you. Inari's house was built away from the village, though its slow growth could be seen in the distance. A lone dock jutted out into the calm waters of a bay barely big enough for a dingy. It seemed to be the quiet country home built as a labor of love. Or at least it would have been had it not been for the howling laughter of two old geezers that sounded like pigs fighting over table scraps. Oh geez, Inari dropped Naruto's hand and scratched the back of his head. It sounds like Gramps has a friend over, and that they're drinking. Let me go check and make sure it's safe to go inside. Otazuna, a gruff voice echoed from inside the house like the roar of an old lion that had far too much pride in itself. I must say you really do have some great beer out here on the island. Even the babes here are top notch. Hey now, Tazuna grumbled like a sleeping bear. I might respect her work Jiraiya, but keep your eyes off my daughter. They sound really drunk, Karen mumbled taking a step closer to Naruto. Karen? He asked turning towards her. She could feel the concern in his voice as she tried to hide from people that couldn't see her. Damn this blonde idiot and her big mouth. I don't have a good history with drunk men, especially older ones. Don't worry, Inari spoke up, my gramps just likes to drink, he doesn't grab people or hit people. Well, whatever might as well just dive on in. Karen followed closely behind Naruto on their approach towards the building. She hated the smell of beer. It only made angry men angrier. Such a vile liquid that brought demons to life. Say, Tazune grumbled, shouldn't you get back to looking for that brat of yours? If he was around these parts he would have shown up already. 
Yea, Jiraiya roared into a might belch that shook the house. I suppose I should, though honestly I've kind of ran out of leads, so I'm just buying time before I go back and get my ass handed to me. Woman troubles? Every day of my life. The bear and the lion roared with laughter making the earth shake. Inari gave them one last smile before he swung open the door. Hey, Grandpa look who I found. The room was plain, with several empty bottles of sake littering the tabletop serving as the main decoration, the scent of alcohol mingled with the mouth-watering scent of a freshly cooked stew. Around the table sat an old grizzly man with tanned skin and a balding head of white hair. Across from him sat a large man with long white hair that coiled around his waist it was so long, it was wild and spiky even as it was contained in a ponytail. He had on a red and green outfit with a headplate that said oil. The room grew silent as all eyes flew to Naruto. Tazuna smiled, well if it isn't, I live another day. Jiraiya shouted spinning up to greet them before he fell on the ground with a giant thud. He laughed holding up a flask of booze as he stared at Naruto with a giant smile on his face. I found him, you are in so much trouble Brad. Jiraiya sat up suddenly, seriously Tsunade's been worried sick she told me that if I came back without you she'd bury me six feet under the tallest mountain. Naruto knew this man? He gave her the creeps. Something about this man was seriously off, as though her female instincts were screaming at her to stay away from him. But he was looking for Naruto right. Wait, was this guy his grandpa or something? What the hell were you thinking? I get you're depressed about losing your friend like that, but really, that's no excuse to run away from the village. Jiraiya's eyes moved towards Karen, he blinked twice and then grew a lecherous smile. Oh, so that's it you went and got yourself a little girlfriend? Well that's a pretty good excuse for me but Tsunade might beat both our asses in. Um, Naruto mumbled stepping between Karen and Jiraiya. Are you my grandpa? Jiraiya looked up his lecherous grin gone, replaced with one of drunken confusion. EHH? Jiraiya narrowed his eyes, his face a mask of drunken confusion. He let out a small burp that sounded like a dying bird. With a groan that knocked him backward, Jiraiya took another drink from his flask. Girl, please tell me that he's just messing with me because he doesn't want to go back to Konoha because he's fallen madly in love with you. Hey wait, you know who I am you're looking for me, right? Can't you tell me anything? He sounded afraid and fearful. The earlier excitement he had when talking to Inari was gone. Fuck, Jiraiya groaned sitting up. Hey to bother you more Tazuna, but do you think we could stay for dinner? I have a feeling it's going to be a lot of storytelling going on. By all means, the more the merrier, just watch the language around the kid will Yasumi's a bit sensitive about that. Tazuna smiled holding up his bear towards Naruto. Don't worry brat, we'll set Yas straight, by the way, who's your girlfriend? I'm Karen, Naruto guided her down to sit beside him at the small table, he tried to let go of her hand. But, part of her refused to let go. She squeezed his hand hard under the table feeling the texture of the top of his hand with her thumb. He needed to know that she was there for him, and that she needed him, no matter who he was. So, what can you tell us about Naruto's past? Blah, Jiraiya stuck his tongue out at a new bottle of beer before he took another drink of it. No way. I'm not going to go off spewing the brat's whole life story until after you two tell me why the hell you two had me travel halfway across the goddamn continent looking for you. Drunk, mad, and old, such a wonderful combination. Why on earth did this drunkard of all people have to know Naruto? Karen sighed, she really hoped that Naruto wasn't actually related to this bastard. Basically, I found Naruto half drowned in a river. Lost my glasses saving him. We went looking for a village or something, found a hut, crazy old lady that lived there used to be a gang leader, old gang attacked, one of them recognized Naruto from here, so he decided to come here, got on a boat, it broke, we ended up stranded near the village hidden in the whirlpools, I became the queen of the Uzumaki and I think the island sunk or something. She took a breath and groaned, then we ended up here, and I still don't have my glasses, what she said, Naruto pointed towards her. Silence followed afterward only interrupted by the sound of beer guzzling. Then Jiraiya roared in laughter. I thought that necklace was familiar. Man, that brings back memories. You were there? Do you know someone called Kashina Uzumaki? She owes me a scroll. Karen barked glaring at the man. It was like this man was trying his hardest to make her dislike him. Yep, I was there with her. She had me digging a tunnel underneath that damn dome to get that scroll. 
The throne kept rejecting her even though she was an Uzumaki. Boy was she mad, said stealing the scroll was her birthright and it wasn't like a bunch of old ghosts could stop her. Yep, Karen hated this guy. Wait wait, tell me did the brat get zapped by the throne too? Jiraiya gave them a toothy grin. Hey, that thing freaking hurt. Yay, but why does that matter? It's not like Naruto is an Uzumaki, of course, the throne would zap him. Or at least that's what she thought, it could just be that she was female and the throne was inhabited by a sexist old man or something. Jiraiya roared with laughter once again. Ha, huh, he's an Uzumaki alright. Wait really? Both Naruto and her shouted, slapping their hands on the table. Wait, why did that even matter? It didn't make him less Naruto. Besides, why didn't the throne thing work for Naruto? Peefed, Jiraiya snorted. Who knows, might be because he's a mutt, or has none of the Uzumaki traits. I couldn't tell ya, I can't believe I'm an Uzumaki. Naruto cheered, oh hey wait, what about my parents, are they in Konoha? I can't wait to introduce Karen to them. I, you don't have parents. In a heartbeat Jiraiya became sober, and all joy died in his eyes. There was no spark of amusement, no joy, just the sad simple truth. They died the night of the Kayubi attack. Oh, well do you know who they are then? I feel like, Naruto tapped on his chest right above the heart. Whatever joy had been in the room vanished, leaving nothing to replace it, just an empty hole. I feel like I should at least know their names. Can't say, Jiraiya scratched the back of his head. I only really got to know you until six months ago when I made you my apprentice. Wait, you're my teacher? Are you some kind of super awesome ninja or something? Great, that meant Naruto was going to be spending more time around this drunk old man. Of course I am. Jiraiya slapped his own hand on the table, causing it to rattle. From the east to the west, north to the south, even the spirits know this mighty Sanin's name. Jiraiya the Toad Sage. Sanin, Sanin, wait. Jiraiya, Sanin, that, he, that? You're one of the legendary three ninja from Konoha? Ah, Jiraiya smiled drawing a finger along his chin. I see that you've heard of me. This, this, this was amazing. Naruto, her thick skulled idiot, was actually an apprentice to one of the most legendary ninja this side of the Magami. That meant he was practically famous. And probably rich, or on his way to becoming a powerful and important ninja. Jackpot. She was going to get that home in no time flat. So, can you tell me what you know about me then? Naruto asked, his tone still lacked that sense of joy and that emptiness sucked away her own joy. It was one thing to know that he didn't have parents, but to find out that he was like her, an orphan with no family had to be worse right? To hope that he might have something, only to have it viciously torn from him. She leaned in next to him so that their shoulders were touching. She tried to say words, but they failed her then, but what could she say that she hadn't already said? Jiraiya leaned back and let out a grunt. I could, or you could wait until we get you back to Konoha where Tsunade can fix you up. She can probably fix your memory loss, especially if it's because of some kind of a physical trauma like hitting your head or drowning, which from your story sound very probably. I'd rather you just tell me if you could. Naruto placed his hands and forehead on the ground, bowing to Jiraiya with as much respect as he could muster. Master. Jiraiya beamed, lips curled into a smile, nostrils flaring, he was enjoying this far more than he should. Well if you insist, I guess I can tell you what I know. Karen flopped down onto the bed it felt like forever since she had a warm safe bed that wasn't moving, and a belly full of delicious food. Something she hoped to be making a habit of once they got to Konoha. Naruto had his own apartment, that meant that they had their own apartment, which meant so many wonderful things. Privacy, a kitchen, baths, and a nice cozy bed. She couldn't wait to get back to Konoha. Just the thought of having a new home. A new safe home with a roof that didn't leak was enough to make her squeal and kick her legs in excitement. Best of all the Hokage, legendary healer and strongest woman in the world, was apparently fond of Naruto so she could probably convince him to convince her to let her stay even if they found out that she was technically a missing nin at this point. A knock sounded on her door. Karen? It was Naruto. What's up? She didn't dare to get up, not want to disturb the elusive comfort she was feeling. Naruto opened the door, blanket, pillow, and mat in his hands. Jiraiya snores. Loud, do you mind if I sleep in here with you? Sure, not like we don't normally spend the night next to each other. Karen gestured towards the empty space next to her. 
Naruto tossed down his bed for the night, looking extra tired. Thanks, Karen. You should call me your highness from now on. Karen turned to Naruto, who flopped down beside her. Why the hell would I do that? Cause you're an Uzumaki and I'm the queen of the Uzumaki. She rested her head on her chin, staring at her travel companion. He was by far the best thing she'd ever pulled out of a river. Don't worry, as my lone subject I promise to treat you well but a bit of respect and dignity. Naruto snorted, pass. Karen smiled, burying her face in the soft pillow that Inari's family had provided them. She should be happy, Naruto should be happy, but he wasn't. Hey, are you okay? You're kind of down or something. Yay I'm fine, he didn't sound fine. She rolled her eyes. You don't sound fine. It's nothing really. Karen scrambled up to her knees. Gripping her pillow tightly she stared at the vague form that was her best friend. Then she rained down righteous pillowy fury upon him, once twice, three times. Ow oh, hey, damn it, is there bricks in that thing? Naruto flailed under her assault. For her finishing move, she pushed the pillow onto his chest and landed on top of him, keeping him pinned against the ground. She flicked his nose. Tell me Naruto. He struggled and probably could have broken free if he really wanted to. She wasn't that strong, but, even if he did escape she would get the answer from him. They had been through too much to keep secrets from each other. Tell me. Naruto stopped and sighed, he refused to look her in the eyes. I'm just worried okay? About what? She relaxed resting her head on her pillow, arms pressed forward so that her hands rested on either side of Naruto's head. About me. What if I get my memories back and I turn into somebody else? Their eyes met for just a moment. Karen felt her smile growing. That's what you're worried about? Honestly, you heard what Inari and Jiraiya said. You're an idiot now. You were an idiot then and you're going to be an idiot after you get your memories back. What about you? He held her gaze longer this time. What happens now? I'm going back to Konoha and you don't have a home anymore, and I don't want to just leave you. He sighed, head flopping to the side. You're too important to me. Her smile grew wide and she pressed down onto him harder knocking the air out of him with an oof. If you think it's that easy to get rid of me Naruto you're sadly mistaken, face it you're stuck with me from now on. Thanks, Karen. He took in a deep breath and smiled. It felt good knowing that she could dispel his fears so easily. He swallowed and the smile vanished. So um when we get back to Konoha, do you think you'd be okay with living with me? Karen blinked scrunching her face up like she just eaten a sour lemon. That was actually her plan from the get-go. What made you think we weren't? You still owe me a home, I don't mind borrowing yours until you provide me one. He gave a wheezing laugh that she felt. Hey, Karen, yay, do you think you could get off me? She smiled and snuggled into her pillow more. No way, to comfy. Naruto groaned in protest. Despite what people said, there was no building up an immunity to a hangover and there was no magical cure all otherwise Tsunade would have found it already. But the killer headache that sounded a successful night's drinking did not prevent Stiff and Jiraiya's good mood. No today was a great day. After a month of following Naruto's trail, he had finally found the brat. Well, the brat found him, but he wasn't one to look a gift horse in the mouth. But the girl, the girl put an interesting twist on things. What was her name again? Oh right, Karen. Karen Uzumaki, apparently the queen of the Uzumaki. Poor Kashina must be rolling in her grave. She was close to Naruto, really close, offering him strength when he didn't need it, and relying on him a great deal. Almost like a parasite, though that was probably a bit harsh considering how by Naruto's own account she saved his life several times. He could bring her to Konoha no problem, and the girl seemed keen on doing that, her face lighting up whenever the village was mentioned. But dragging her around the world while he trained Naruto to use the Kyubi's chakra was not something he was too keen on. We'll cross that road when we come to it I guess, Jiraiya grumbled scratching the back of his head. Damn Brad is probably going to throw a fit if I try to separate them. With a yawn that smelled like low tide he paused in front of their room. He should probably leave Tazuna with something considering how hospitable the family was. Maybe a sample chapter of his next book and a bottle of toad brew, yay that sounded fair. With another yawn, he slid the door open. Alright brats. Yep, they were both Uzumaki that was for sure. The two of them had somehow managed to squirm out of their respective beddings and were now sprawled around the room like twin starfishes, with Karen's foot pressing into Naruto's face. So much for walking in on them cuddling like two adorable idiots. 
That's all for now. If you enjoy it, then please like, share, and do comments.